and we are live hello 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 everybody hi hi i spent the last like obviously i spent like 30 minutes like setting up for stream i got like a routine i got my water just the lighting you know do a test recording blah 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 um but i also added an extra step today which is making an oc because <laughs> it's something I have to do and I hate making them on the spot because sometimes it goes very wrong <laughs> sometimes it goes wrong Trent that's all I'll say so today I actually took a little bit of extra time and was like well let me think of who I want to put in the shoots it'd be just easier if I liked playing as myself but I just I as I've said many times before I just can't do it so I won't oh I'm so happy I finally have the freedom to come back to the streams ah, I've been busy lately I have noticed that butter but it's no problem it's no problem I get it life gets hectic my life was hectic before it isn't hectic now so it's not for the time not gonna lie Trent would fit here no I'm not I thought about it I actually did think about it I thought about putting Trent here I was like no 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 I want someone kind of likable that way if you know, someone who isn't likable, <coughs> guys, uh, might, you know, I want to be able to defend them a little bit. Also, fun fact, I use Geist and Kale for my rendezvous. Did you really? <laughs> I'm, I, okay, now that's a big move to bring one of your pre-established OCs into, like, a new game. See, I just like making, like, a whole roster of new uh, OCs. I mean, I could slip Chris in here, but I don't know how comfortable I'd be doing that. I I'd be, like, on arm the whole time. I'd just be, like... Also, I've been listening to this, like, background music for, like, a maddening amount of time. Um, okay, so... It, it actually isn't as dark in here as it was earlier. Finally, it let out. Jesus Christ. Um, so... Here are the warnings. This game does not contain violence or sexual content, but it deals with heavily with topics of mental health. There is a lot of verbally and emotionally abusive behavior. Please play with discretion, especially if you have a history of negative self-talk. Uh, for more details, see the itch page. Do you want to continue? I like when you say no, it just exits out. <laughs> it's just like, oh, okay, well then this isn't for you. Get out of here. Now we can see smug ass over here. I think that this would be a very frustrating experience if you use Chris, not gonna lie. Yeah, that's why I'm like, yeah, we'll just throw a new baby in there. You know, it's okay. I got a name and I'm ready. So I'm excited. It's, I cannot believe, it's weird because I've recorded playthroughs of me playing your games, but you've never got to see them live. So this is my first live time playing a Chattercap game, but then it's not my first time playing a Chattercap game uh, on recording. So I like the little glitchy, glitchy, glitchy boys. I don't think there's much I need to adjust or set up. Everything seems pretty good right now. So I think we're good to, oh wait, let me check the voices actually. Stick that bitch up. Uh, it's pretty good. I'll just make it a little louder because you pay good money for them, might as well hear them, you know? If at any point you can't, just let me know. So, who I decided to throw into the lion's den today is a little character I like to call Abram. I just wanted to get a name that wasn't starting with a G or a K. <laughs> that was like it. Um, but I like the name. I think it fits. I don't know. What is their fucking personality? I don't know. They just have bad mental health. That is the only thing I've got. And that's the only thing we need starting out. So, we're good. And they're gonna be he, him. Uh, there's a man that follows me. <laughs> Ew, immediately. <laughs> immediately get me out. <laughs> immediately my, <laughs> my like, self-defense kicked in. <laughs> Flight or flight. Um, Abra was gonna get a whole experience. I'm excited. How did, how is every, okay. You know what I'm sick of? And here's the thing. I have made this entire, and this isn't against nobody, by the way, I'm just ranting, um, is I love how this game has only been out for like, what, three, four days? Okay, I, and I am under the impression that you guys have like beta tested the game and stuff, but how in the world do you people play these games like immediately? God damn. Like, I intentionally set the stream like ahead you know, so then that way I was like, okay, well, I'm not too late to the party. And yet everybody was like, that was a great game. Holy shit. And it's like, <laughs> Lord, <laughs> chill out. <laughs> Ow. I'm, maybe I'm just slow, which is okay. Uh, but the stream speed me up a little bit and I'm still behind. I have no idea. It's, it's actually a little bad. Today. <laughs> it's a little like, God damn. I just want to catch up. 
Sorry, the sound effects kind of scared me. I'm gonna turn them down slightly. <laughs> Now's a good turn you down a little bit. Or is that UI? Uh, well, let's try SFX and see if that does it. Whoops. <laughs> Whoops. Whoops. It's okay. Part two. And let's save once we get here in case I have to make any other. Oh, it auto saved. Well, you know. Whatever. <laughs> I honestly only get to games like a week after they release at the earliest. Exactly. Like, give me at least two to three business days, please. Oh, lol, don't worry. I just finished my playthrough a few hours earlier, too. So, oh, oh, okay. So, you're not too late. Okay. I feel a little bit better about it then. <laughs> I sit in the cafe typing at my laptop as I sip the final dregs of my iced coffee. Good choice. Good fucking choice. I look up, gazing over the top of the screen to the seat opposite of me. He's sitting there menacingly. <laughs> he wasn't sitting there before, but I'm not surprised to see him. He vanishes from time to time. There was a blissful period when he didn't appear for an entire weekend. Still, even when he's not visible, I know that he's always around, watching, waiting. Yeah, I'd be off put too. And that, okay, here's the thing. Doesn't matter how hot a man is. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Like, we can acknowledge it, but we can also be like, also, I don't want to say this because I feel like it's it's mean, <laughs> but it's like, is this not just Hugh 2.0? Like, we didn't hear Hugh talk, but I feel like they're cut from the same cloth, these two. Put these two in a room, who's coming out crying? That's what I want to know. My money is on Geist. <laughs> He's a young man dressed in sharp, crisp clothes. Some might even call him handsome. Uh, he crosses one leg over the other and leans back, enjoying the aroma of his espresso. Of course he drinks fucking espresso! Uh, before taking a sip, he never takes his eyes off me. I focus my gaze on the laptop screen, trying to avoid looking at his face. I was in the middle of typing a sentence, but I can't remember the continuation. For a minute, I stare blankly at the document, uh, typing, deleting, and retyping the same word over and over as a cold, prickling sensation watches over me. The man finally speaks. His voice is calm, but reassured. He talks with the qu quiet confidence of a university professor. This Don't is a off. nice cafe, isn't it? It's your favorite. It's cozy and quiet, and the coffee is good. It's not too expensive either. I feel like he's trying to worm himself into my brain. <laughs> it's a good performance. I was like, Jesus Christ, okay. I'm like, I wanted to do this number. I <laughs> take the earbud out. Like, get away. Personal space, my dude. Even the voice is invading. That's crazy. That's good. Uh, they even have the same outfit. Not gonna lie. I just have archetype for blonde. Not a bad thing. I like a snarky blonde. I do. I really do. Like, they're gross, but I love them. It's like, it's like a Brussels sprout. Like, they're not good, but they are. That's a horrible. That, 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 I could have used, like, any other thing. What's up with me and Brussels sprouts? How many times have you brought up Brussels sprouts on this stream? Let's not talk about it. I, I want to move past. I don't respond. The man continues to chat. All of the employees are kind. They're generous, allowing students to work here for so long. Okay. <laughs> Can you imagine this happening to you in real life? Just some dude, like, just starts talking to you like you guys fucking know each other. I don't know you. <laughs> what are you talking about? But you sound good. And you look good. But also, who are you? <laughs> Lols, Brussels sprouts. I do like Brussels sprouts, not gonna lie. I used to hate them. Yeah, well, let's hope the same is true for Geist here. <laughs> used to hate them, maybe I'll like them. <laughs> Abram just... Hello, someone talked about blondes. I answered the call. Hello, Narelle, how are you? Uh, first time chatter. W wait, you are? Holy shit, I guess I never realized. Did it just get darker? <laughs> Am I tripping? Uh, hello. So. Though, you've already been here for 30 minutes. It was fairly empty when you first arrived, but it's going to be crowded soon. People always drop by to kill time before their evening classes. Don't you think it's about time to leave? This dude is so fucking weird. You're so weird. Why are you so weird? Just be normal, dude. Just be like, hey, what's up? How's the weather? How are you? Who are you? What's your name? Like, just normal, basic shit. Dude's just going on a tangent. Uh, I have a drink. 
The man makes up, <laughs> picks up the plastic cup, shakes it, rattling ice cubes. He cocks his head and looks at me, raising an eyebrow. You had a drink. Okay, tomato, tomato. Joy to the ghost that has been stalking you here. Please just be normal. <laughs> Look, actually, yes. Actually, that's exactly what I'm saying, okay? Because if I tomorrow became a damn ghost, I'm already off putting on, just on, on, first initial impact okay so i'm gonna have to do double work to just be like approachable okay casper managed to do it you could do it dope jasper would have been a great name too i'm just putting that out there i'm just putting that out there i'm thinking about getting some food maybe a pastry or a bagel are you really yes when you're trying to save money and you have <laughs> sandwich fixings at home <laughs> then make me one, bitch! Then make me one! I slumped down, leaning my face closer to the screen as I mashed the keys, filling the document with gibberish only tangentially uh, related to the topic of the paper. The man sighs. The employees are too kind. They won't tell you to leave, even if you're being a bother. You're a paying customer, after all. A paying customer that sat here for 30 minutes after getting a single coffee and insists on taking up an entire two-person table for just one person. <laughs> <laughs> this is like observation on steroids. Like, <laughs> I can't. Let's okay. go home, okay? <laughs> Yeah, sure. Fuck it. One minute later and I'm tossing my cup in the recycling. I open the door to the cafe. The cold wind outside uh, buff buffets my face and chili droplets sting my skin. As I head back to my dorm, the man walks alongside me, a satisfied and jaunty spring. <laughs> so, la -di -da. Uh, in his stuff, he tries to hold my hand, but I refuse. <laughs> fucking smack that shit. I was like, get out of here. As he strolls along, he hums merrily. He even reaches out to hold mine, my hand interlacing his fingers with mine, but I shrug my hand out of his grasp. The drizzle begins to turn into a shower. The man's mood doesn't dampen. He jogs alongside me at an easy pace as I sprint home, shivering as the rain soaks through my clothes. When I- Okay, there is something genuinely, incredibly unsettling about him just being there from moment one. I was expecting some, like, build-up, we're just doing our own thing, and then all of a sudden a ghost man just comes out of nowhere. Nope, this is just normal. Ghost man hangs out with us, sits at the coffee, t yaps, and then we're just like, ah, I just wanted a pastry, and then we go home. <laughs> it's amazing, like, okay. Uh, Hand-holding before marriage? Um, not me. Not me. Could it be me? When I unlock the door, the man waits to the side, still watching my face closely. Droplets of water. <laughs> Thank you for the follow, Dura. Droplets of water fall from the hair, framing his sunny expression. Before I go inside, uh, he pulls my sleeve and lands a kiss on my cheek. Bro, <laughs> I did fucking ew. Get I was so happy to spend this time with you. I'll see you again soon. Bro is, <laughs> bro is creaming his jeans. All right, he walks away. When I poke my head into the hallway, he has already vanished. Oh, I like the little kitty. <laughs> I know I saw it on Twitter, but seeing it looks a little different here. This little hat man, hat man, dog man. He's cute. I'm surprised. Usually he follows me inside. I'm surprised he fucking didn't. Like he's already been invading. I don't know how many other boundaries. What's another? Tag it on. He lingers, preparing tea and snacks and soothing music. Then, after an hour or two, he disappears. I'm always glad when he's gone. <laughs> Relatable. Uh, that man wasn't always there. I can't remember seeing him when I was in elementary school. Perhaps he was lingering somewhere, watching, but he never came to talk to me. The first time I met him was in middle school. Ooh. <laughs> right before the school play. As I held up backstage, frantically rehearsing my lines, I saw him for the first time. I gazed up to see a boy kneeling beside me. He looked different at the time. He was younger, and he wore a simple collared shirt and a pair of jeans. I thought that he might have been a classmate, but I didn't recognize him. At first, I thought he was strange, but I tried to ignore him. Instead, I focused on the crumpled sheet of printer paper, repeating the words until they rolled off the tongue. Then he spoke. There are so many people watching. <laughs> I'm not going to do the voice. <laughs> I could never do it as good as the VA anyway. <laughs> Can you imagine what it would be like if you forgot your lines? You're standing on stage in front of a dozen of people, flapping your mouth like a dying fish. Makes two of us, then. Learned from the best. 
I wonder what your classmates would think. They'd probably curse you for ruining weeks of hard work, for being the only wrench in a well-oiled machine. Oh, well, I hope that doesn't happen. That would be terrible, wouldn't it? <laughs> Half an hour later, as I stood on stage in front of dozens of parents, my mind went blank. I forgot my lines. This bitch. <laughs> He's feeding off of our embarrassment. I choke, tears stinging the corner of my eyes. As I looked around the auditorium, I saw the stranger standing at the back, arms crossed as he leaned against the wall. I couldn't tell if he looked sympathetic or elated. As I walked home, he found me again, skipping alongside me. He held my hand and smiled. I screamed at him. I pushed him away and ran. When he was out of sight, I looked at my palm. He had given me some chocolate. <laughs> wow, Cadbury. Since then, I've seen the stranger countless times. He appears anywhere. When I'm walking around outside, when I'm shopping, when I'm in class, the only place that offers me some semblance of refuge is in my room, although he still sneaks in there sometimes, invading me even in my most private spaces. All right, Edward Cullen on fucking steroids. I don't know his name, but I call him Geist. I can think of some good names. <laughs> Little bitch. Uh, uh, I lean over my keyboard and groan. No matter what I try, the program won't output the correct answer. After over an hour of tinkering, the result is the same. I look at the clock on the bottom left of the screen, 7.03 p.m. If I recall correctly, there should be a computer science tutoring schedule from 7 to 9 tonight. Dang, I missed the opportunity to make him sparky. <laughs> uh, my fingers twist in my shirt. I've never gone, uh, gone to tutoring before, but the assignment is due at 11 p.m. I bite my lip. Staring hard at the code, hoping that some solution will magically appear in my brain. It doesn't. Relatable. This is the skin of a killer bill. <laughs> the clock changes. 7.04 p.m. If I'm nothing else, I'm a Twilight stan. I don't know how many Twilight references I've made in this damn stream. Uh, too many. I stand. I, I can do this. The alternative is missing the assignment and getting a zero after all. And then he's going to pop in and he's going to be like, if you do that, you're going to inconvenience the tutor. And then the tutor's going to want to kill you. And then they're going to like call you a little bitch. And then you're going to be <laughs> having to come home and crawl out of your sheets crying like a sim. Besides, who goes to tutoring? There probably won't be anyone there. I mean, people definitely go. I was wrong. When I'm standing outside the door, my resolve falters. I peer in through the shades covering the window. There are quite a few people inside, at least ten. A familiar cold hand lands on my shoulder. Guy smiles at me. His expression twists into something resembling sympathy. So many people. <sighs> Better not go in. Let's go home. I'm sure that you can figure it out. Okay, I'm losing my mind here for two seconds because I just... It, something clicked in my head. Geist is literally just like Morgana from Persona 5. Like, you just fucking do anything and you're just trying to live your life. And they're like, hey, you should go to bed. You should test, text back Yusuke. You, should, uh, you shouldn't go outside while it's raining. Like, just the whole time. It, it's just this. It's just Morgana if they just wanted to do you. <laughs> it's just like, it's like st quiet, blonde man. Is the room not open? Oh. I turn. What a cutie, man. A boy with a wide smile and a warm brown eyes is standing behind me. Oh, what's that meme? What's that Twitter meme where it's like... I, I'm not I'm I'm not gonna listen to a man no no I'm not gonna tell a man with brown eyes what to do whatever you say beautiful <laughs> that's me right now I was like okay <laughs> guys talk to shut up don't talk to me Morgana uh, and then <laughs> love of my life let us do thing um, hi chive chive sorry the colors on my chat are like all mixed together. Sometimes I need to look at the actual overlay because they don't get so mixed together. Because Butter, Chime, and Norel all have just different shades of green. And I'm like, which one is who? <laughs> so, hello, thank you for dropping by. I recognize him. His sky blue Hawaiian shirt decorated with uh, plumerias is difficult to forget. We are in the same lecture. He always sits in the front row. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> Couldn't have said it better myself. Oh, I got it. No key yeah, card, goodbye, right? Chatter. I got you. Not me having to stop you guys from fighting. Wait, what's where's the back? There you go. Let's go home. No, okay. no, not you, not you. <laughs> Hush. Uh. <laughs> Fuck. Okay. Um. How far? Oh, I'm all the way at the top. I'm dumb. It's okay. Don't worry. Don't worry. Oh, I got it. No key card, right? I got you. <laughs> he got me. You heard that, guys? He got me. <laughs> Not me fiddling with the UI. It's okay. Uh, Chatter and Chip appear to me are just two different shades of blue. <laughs> See? you. 
Chime doing it again, add it again, plagiarism. Even even on the chat names, even on the chat names, just can't have their own color, have to steal somebody else's. Oh, I got it, no key card, right, I got you, sorry. He maneuvers around me and swipes a card through the ID reader. When it clicks, he swings the door open and holds it for me. After you. I take a deep breath and go in. <laughs> the room is surprisingly crowded, probably because the problem set in due tonight. Several small groups of students are huddled over their laptops in different areas of the room, scrutinizing their screens. A couple uh, stragglers are hunched over the university desktops, typing furiously. There seems to be a single tutor, a pale Japanese guy. He has uh, messy dyed hair and he's wearing a tricone uh, university letterman's jacket. He is leaning on the desk next to one of the stragglers, pointed to the screen as he explains something. Yo, living in this, wherever this is, like just this universe, sucks. <laughs> Like, no offense, but it's like you got Raku in the fucking woods, you got guys to your head, like, you're, you're not safe anywhere. Can't even get a coffee. Um, I go to a corner of the room and sit between two of the computers. I take out my laptop, rousing it from its slumber and navigating to my code editor. Guy settles in the chair next to me, crossing one leg over the other, probably stealing the seat from somebody else somehow. The boy also sits next to me on the opposite side. He leaves a one computer gap between us. My heartbeat hitches. Is he going to try to talk to me? I just came to get some help with my homework. I'm not ready to make small talk with a stranger. To my relief, the boy just takes out his laptop and starts typing. Need any help? The tutor walks over. His icy eyes flit between us before settling on the boy. Wait, is the tutor supposed to be fucking Raku? Did I just overlook that? Because it could be. It really could be. The boy gestures to me with both oh, hands. Oh, uh, that person was here first. Look at you, troubling him. You wouldn't even have come in if he didn't hold the door for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's hope you can talk without tripping over your own tongue like a buffoon. Got it. <laughs> I'm sorry. If this happened to me, I'd kill myself. What? Dude, shut up. Okay, my cheeks heat up. I frantically click through my pages. Okay, I'm sorry. I If I'm laughing, it's just because, like, it's either I laugh or I get mad. I don't know which one is, like, preferable. <laughs> my cheeks heat up. I frantically click through my pages of web searches, hoping that the tutor doesn't see my open tabs or my bookmarks. Finally, pull the code uh, editor back up. I'm r running into an error, and I can't figure it out. The tutor uh, peruses my screen. It takes him less than two seconds to spot the issue. Easy one. Here, you've got less than or equal sign. It should be a less than. I make the correction. The tutor waits as I run the program. He directs me through a couple of tests. When he verifies that the code is working as intended, he turns to the boy. All right, what about you? <laughs> if I'm being honest, I don't really know where to start. He's like, I don't even know how I got here. <laughs> the tutor raises an eyebrow and grabs the chair next to the boy, making himself comfortable. Let's see, the palindrome problem? For this one, you need to make a recursive function. I return to my own homework. My brain is particularly slow today. Uh, me every day. My fingers stumbling over the keys. For some reason, I can't seem to focus on- Maybe it's because you've got a British man in your fucking head. <laughs> that would make it hard to focus on anything, ever. Um, oh my god, I just had a horrible thought. <laughs> You know what, we'll save it for later. I don't want to gross out the fucking chatters the second they got in here. 20 minutes pass, and I'm still working on the same problem. Guys, just trying to save us from Raku. Go, King! Not go, King! Sorry, Jim, I love you, but I am roasting you for your views here. Especially when the British man is so pretty. I don't want to hear not a word out of your mouth. <laughs> I don't care how pretty he is. He's annoying. <laughs> so annoying. Uh, Guy leans back in his chair as he reads a novel. The bell jar is in emblazoned in the elegant curved letters on the cover. You can't focus because there are too many people here. What if they're all looking at you, seeing how horribly slow you are? <laughs> Why are you even in this class when you're so terrible at coding? <laughs> can't think of a worse fate. Jesus Christ. I thought my just internal thoughts were annoying as fuck. This is worse. This is so much worse. Oh my God. Also, maybe I can't focus because you're talking to me. Hello? Two plus two? Um, no, don't sit for here. He's a red flag. I like a red flag. I got behind Raku. I was on the Raku train because Raku wasn't annoying. He was just whining. <laughs> this guy's fucking annoying. Uh, my mouth tightens into a skull. 
next to me, the tutor has been... Honestly, I could have played as myself because the main character just does not give a fuck about any of this. None of it. And I'm living for it. Next to me, the tutor has been hovering by the boy the entire time, guiding his uh, charge methodically through the problem. However, it's slow going. Several sheets of paper covered with scrawl diagrams are lying on the desk, but the boy's eyebrows are still furrowed in confusion. The older student sighs, glancing at the other students in the room. I'll be back. Let me help them for a sec. The boy nods in understanding. Geist claps his book shut, demanding my attention. You know what? Every time Geist annoys me, I'm going to take a drink. I meant to do that beforehand, and I forgot. So we're going to do it now. And I'm sure we've still got plenty of time to get hydrated. Uh, Raku is the best red flag, but please, not guys, no. <laughs> Raku got his uh, apologism tour in Kanao. Okay, I can understand that. That's true. That's very true. Even before that, I liked him, though. Why don't we go home? You got what you came for. We can finish in peace and quiet at the dorms. Not if you keep talking. I grit my teeth. I want to stuff Geist's book down his throat, but then I hear something weird. And also, he's pretentious, which I think is actually a great uh, character trait. And characters actually like when they're pretentious. There's something very endearing about it because it just shows that they're insecure. Um, well, honestly, Norel, it seems that that will be the case. Alcohol poisoning speedrun. <laughs> it's water. It's water. I swear. Uh, the boy is making a strange, pitiful sound in his throat. He sounds kind of like a whining puppy. He stares at the computer in dejection. His frown is so deep that it looks like a rain cloud crossed over his face. I I I his scream. Every time he runs his program, it freezes, refusing to budge until he forces clo force closes it. I look a little closer. Oh, he forgot to increment the counter variable. Should I say something? It's an easy enough fix, but my throat feels dry. Mm, you'd better not. Can you really explain yourself clearly? You're just going to make him more confused. I don't think that's possible at this point. <laughs> Besides, he didn't ask for your help. Why do you want to stick your nose somewhere it doesn't belong? If anything, he'll think you're a creep who's spying on him. Yeah, can you imagine being creepy and sticking your nose where it doesn't belong and, and, you know, talking when no one talked to you? Can you imagine doing that? How weird would that be? Oh my god, how weird. Geist's voice squeezes my vocal cords. It's difficult to breathe, let alone speak. I'm offering to help fuck this guy. I don't care. <laughs> Shit. Or should I get Geist over with first? That's the real question. <clears throat> That's the real... Fuck. We always do bad in first. You know what? I won't say a goddamn word. <laughs> sorry, I'm so sorry. I burst my lips and return my attention to my own homework. I type away for a few minutes, writing a series of loops. Um, excuse me. Oh, what is it, baby? My heart rate spikes and my shoulders hunch as if swinging on a rusty hinge. My head turns slowly to look at the boy sitting next really to me. Really sorry to bother you, but would you mind taking a look at this? My cold keeps freezing and... I can't figure it out. I can't say no to you. <laughs> my, I scoop my chair over and he makes room for me. I pretend to study his screen. There, you didn't increment your counter variable, so the loop never stops running. Ah, uh, so that's what it was. <laughs> <laughs> Genuinely so happy. Imagine picking guys over this guy. Can you fucking imagine? Can you imagine? Like, full chest. Like, just... <laughs> just I'm sorry. Oh wait, I didn't put I didn't put Poulter away. Oh, I saw that I think it was Tommy that named it. I think that's adorable. Um he types the correction and runs the program. It runs without freezing, even though it doesn't output the correct answer. You saved me. Whew, thank you. Uh what's your name? I'm Clay. <laughs> the music playing. <laughs> it really adds so much. Hello, Clay. I'm Abram. Nice to meet you. We're in the same lecture, right? I'm pretty sure I've seen you around. Probably. I nod my head. My eyes inadvertently skirt around his face, avoiding direct contact. We return to our respective problem sets. Once or twice, he reaches out to me with a question, or asks me what problem I'm working on. Every time he opens his mouth, my stomach does a backflip. Slowly, the other students file out of the room. Soon, Kalei and I are the only ones left. And Geist, uh, uh, the door opens. A female student hovers in the doorway. She's dark-skinned. Her umber hair falls in coils, framing her face. Aha, uh -huh, yeah, I was on to this shit. She's wearing a bright blue Tricone University sweatshirt, a pair of dark washed jeans, and a white backpack. When she sees Kalei and me, her eyes widen in surprise. She talks to the tutor, letting the door close behind her. Oh, are you still busy? Uh, yeah. Take your time. I'll be over here. 
Kalei's eyes widen and he waves enthusiastically at the older student. She smiles and waves back. The older student goes to the other side of the room <clears throat> and sits in the chair. She slings her backpack over the back of the seat before uh, taking a book out of her bag and starting to read. Do you know her? Yeah. She's a TA from one of my other classes. Super nice and so smart. She gave me a lot of advice about the courses and teachers in the bio department. I eye the clock. <clears throat> 9.15 p.m. What is up with my voice today? Hello? Come back? <laughs> Guys, he's strangling my vocal cords. Come on back, you bitch! <laughs> How are you? Um, <clears throat> he seems kind of dumb. I'd hug him. <laughs> How the narration not mentioning this girl beyond being a TA is also a murderer. <laughs> Justified murderer. Um, I'm here too, too long. The tutor is only paid to stay on the clock until 9. I start to pack my things. I'm not done, but I'll just have to finish it up somewhere else. Next to me, Kalei seems to have the same idea. I think the icy eyed um, upperclassmen and exit the computer lab. <clears throat> Future and murder, to be fair. <laughs> Semantics. Um, I check my phone again. 9.20 now. I still have an hour and a half to finish up and submit. I should go to the library. I can't waste valuable time walking back to my dorm. Before I have the chance to put on my headphones, Kalei jogs up beside me, his backpack bouncing uh, on his shoulder. I instinctively tense up. Hey, you still get some homework to do, right? Do you want to work on it together? I mean, <laughs> never has homework actually sounded appealing until this moment right here. Um, uh, <laughs> Abram just can't talk ever. They are just... <laughs> I'm so taken aback, and I can't even think to refuse, he beams. Shoot! Comrades until 11. <laughs> Gee, it's done. <laughs> With all help from me, I'm assuming. Kalei and I both slump on the table relieved. 10.52 p.m. We submitted our assignments just in time. Thanks for doing it with me. I don't know what I would have done without you. I was gonna make a joke. I'm really trying not to make dirty jokes. It's too easy, okay? I'm better than that. I'm not a comedian in any way, but you know, we gotta have high brow humor here. We can't have low brow humor. Otherwise, we're no better than Geist. Um, I can't resist smiling, hoping that I don't look overly awkward. It was fun. Well, as fun as doing homework could be. Kalei is easy to talk to and jokes around a bit while still uh, taking his work seriously. Coding didn't come easily to him initially, but once things started to click, he began to breeze through the problems much more easily. I was worried that it would be a one-sided affair, but he ended up helping me as much as I helped him. As I close out my coding editor, I side-eye the blonde man sitting next to me. <laughs> to my surprise, Guy's as silent as a mouse. When we were finishing our homework, I noticed him glaring at the two of us over the top of the bell jar. Bro, just read your fucking book, okay? Get your AR points, don't talk to me. But the blonde man didn't say a word. Good, good, stay that way. He's plotting, and I know it, but still. Even now, no venomous quips escape his lips. He just stares at Kalei, face twisted in an expression of vague irritation. Ah, it's this late? Oh, gotta go. Early morning tomorrow. See you in class. See ya. Uh, he smiles as he waves goodbye. After he leaves, my chest feels light. Uh, sometimes good things do happen, even to people like me. Sometimes the sun does come, even to a place where it always rains. I have to keep myself from humming as I pack up my own belongings. Hello, Pookie Bears and friends. Hello, Snacks. Geist is annoying as fuck. <laughs> like, lovingly. I mean, voice performance, great. Character design, great. I'm sure he's written to be annoying as fuck, so writing great on that front. Oh my gosh. When I exit the library, the air is chilly. How are we doing here to shit? Of course, of course. The air is chilly, nipping at my nose and cheeks. It's completely dark and mostly empty. The lamps casting eerie pools of light over the main plaza. As I go down to the library steps, Guys follows a step behind, matching my every stride. I steer my gaze ahead, trying to ignore him. I take my headphones from around my neck and snap them over my ears. A welcome shield from the cold. I take out my phones and select my listening material of choice. Ooh, okay. I was hoping that there was going to be a choice. Okay. If this were me, I'd be listening to either exciting music or a podcast. But if it's Abram, and yes, I'm saving because I don't, I don't know. I don't know what's important or not. Okay, it's like that. Um, he's going to listen to an audiobook. Smarter than me. Uh, I'm Britta Fowler. 
No, he's my husband. Are you? No, no, no. So far, the shit talking is going poorly. I opened up the audiobook that I started last night. The narrator starts to recount the mysterious disappearance of the main character's exactly a mystery book, too? Okay. Uh, I turn towards the path leading down to my dorm, but something catches my eye. Someone's waving at me. A girl wearing a white hoodie, her hair tossed into a loose bun. I recognize her, although I don't know her name. We're in the same classic seminar. Let me guess, this is... Nellie's friend. What should I do? Should I wave? Should I pretend that I don't see her and walk past? Well, we're doing the guy stuff first, so let's not wave. Let's just be a dickhead. <clears throat> it's <laughs> not be a dickhead, but just be antisocial. It's not my fault you made him pretty. True. True. No, redirect the hatred towards Texas, at least. Oh, no. It's just a random gal. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I, I lower my eyes, pulling my headphones tighter over my ears. I don't see anything. I don't hear anything. Eventually, she skips past me, greeting a girl jogging out of the library. I relax. I made the right choice. Did you? Uh, of course she didn't. She couldn't have been waving at me. We barely know each other. We're not friends. I turn up the volume on my phone and walk faster. I just want to get home as quick as possible. However, even with my headphones blaring over my ears, Geis' voice still haunts me. That's right. Pretend that you don't see anyone. Pretend that you don't hear anyone. If you don't talk to them, they'll never hurt you. Then what about you, big dog? Then what about you? Hmm? Where do you factor into this equation? <laughs> I get up unusually late the next morning. Well, morning is probably generous. It's afternoon by the time I put down my phone and roll out of bed. After getting home, I stayed up until 4 a.m. on socials. I didn't even process what I was looking at. I just scrolled. I could hold my newborn kitten in one hand. Famous influ influencer acts like jerk for the 15th time this week. Modern dating sucks and we'll all die alone. It was stupid and pointless, but I just wanted to, my escape to overload my brain with such simulation that I could, I could forget my troubles. <clears throat> I set up, my head aches, my stomach growls, clawing at my insides. Well, I guess I should eat something. When I enter the cafeteria, a menagerie of scents assaults my nose. There's the typical array of brunch items, eggs, pancakes, sausages, uh, fruit and yogurt. There's also a limited selection of normal lunch dishes. I peruse the menu that's posted near the entrance. Usually I grab something quick and portable that I can take to the park or to my dorm room, like a smoothie or a packaged sandwich, but today I eye the hot food stations, my mouth watering. I would have to eat at the cafeteria, but I look around the hall. There aren't too many people here, just a couple of stragglers. It's late for lunch, so most of the students have already come and gone. My grumbling stomach wins over uh, any reservations I have about eating in public. I really want to eat the... Ooh, not macaroni and cheese. When poor goulash is right there. Red lunch with mushrooms. We're doing this one. <laughs> sorry, sorry, chatter. Gotta eat your kind. Uh, the student work uh, worker ladles some red lentil curry over a heaping bed of jasmine rice. I take it to a table in the corner. I dig my spoon into the curry and I admire the vibrant red sauce juxtaposed against the white rice. The creaminess from the coconut milk. Oh, this sounds so good. And the blend of bold spices. It only takes me a few minutes to finish half of the dish. It's you. Mind if I sit here? <laughs> your favorite was the mac and cheese. <laughs> <laughs> it's you, Ava, right? Mind if I stay here? Yeah. No, I mean, no. I always sh See, that's exactly what I would do. Clay is standing next to me holding a tray with a grilled cheese sandwich. <laughs> of course he is. Uh, a container of sweet potato curly fries and a glass of cola. I raise a hand to cover my my coughs and gesture to the seat in front of me. Clay beams and sits Didn't down. think I'd see you here. Did you manage to get any sleep last night? A little. <laughs> A, a bit. <laughs> I'm <laughs> not as morphic. Holy shit, maybe I should have played as myself. I'm barely able to get the words out. I'm still frazzled by the sudden intruder at my table. You see what happened because you decided to sit here. Now this guy found you. And you'll have to eat the rest of your lunch trying to have awkward small talk with someone you barely know. <sighs> God damn. <laughs> Uh, to be honest, though, this is the voice in the back of my head when I play, like, bigger Otome games because then I'm like, oh, shit, I said the wrong thing and now they're gonna hate me and they're gonna kill me later in the same route. Oh, my God. <laughs> the familiar blonde man is sitting next to me, sipping a nice coffee. He glares at Kalei. He looks like he wants to strangle the boy. Yeah, good fucking luck with those weak-ass noodle arms. Um, I, do, I just love how he always pops up like a demon to say the most unhinged thing and it makes him so endearing. 
<laughs> sure, that's one word for it. I'm gonna punch him, I swear to god. Man, Kamsai is so much tougher than I thought it'd be. Mm -hmm. I took it because I thought it would be easier than taking an actual math class. But somehow it's even worse. Preach, my man. He pushes a container of sweet potato fries towards me, but I shake my head. He takes a fry and chomps it in half. Yeah. <laughs> How's it for you? Hard? Nah, I'm a genius. I want to major it. It's not bad. It's tough. It is not bad. I'm cool. It's not too bad. Kalei nods, taking another bite of his sandwich. I look down. He only just sat down, but the chat is already uh, petering, petering, petering out. I can't keep up a conversation with this guy. I can only hope that he'll eat quickly and leave me alone. Kalei puts a grilled cheese uh, down. He wipes his fingers on his napkin before taking out his phone. Hey, do you mind if I add you on try message? Sure. None yeah, of my friends are taking no. comp sci, so I don't have anyone to suffer with me. Please. <laughs> I love when a man begs. <laughs> uh oh, yeah. Before I can even process what he asks, I'm already fumbling my phone out of my pocket. I nearly What's your ID? It. Oh, no. My pulse quickens as I open the app that I never opened before. Ah! <laughs> On the inside, I'm screaming. It's prompting me to make an account. Uh, Guy has finished his coffee. He crosses his leg, turning sideways on the chair to face me with an amused smirk on his face. Oh, no. Better not let Calais see that. He'll find out that you're a hopeless loner. He probably won't think a thing After about all, it. After all, you didn't even bother making an account because you don't have a single friend to add on try message. Okay, the reality is simple, is that if you have Geist around you all the time, that is an immediate bitch repellent. Like, n no bitches for uh, forever. And also, no friends. Because he's a loser, and so by proxy, you will become a loser because you're around him. That's how that works. You are who you hang around with. I'm just saying. So unfortunately, we're a lame ass because we're surrounded by one. Sorry, give me a second. Forgot to update my phone. It's uh, auto updating now. Oh yeah, no problem. <laughs> I drop my phone under the table and frantically input my information. I would say I can fix him about guys, but that's a lie. I don't want to fix him. I love him because he's toxic. <laughs> And maybe I know that you talk see it's like no you don't deserve Britney Spears I'm sorry I take that back <laughs> I drop my phone under the table and frantically input my information it feels like I'm dismantling a bomb tick tock tick tock this bro got nothing else better to do like nothing go read your fucking book dog I want to strangle this smirking blonde man I hurriedly change my PFP to a random picture from my download I, I got it shoot we add each other on try message. His PFP is a banana wearing sunglasses. <laughs> and the tag under his name simply said, live a life. <laughs> what a cool dude. He's the Kool-Aid man. No way. What? Does he know our PFP? What? Did I do something wrong? Is my profile weird? Is that detective dog? Is that what that dog was in our room? That's so cute. Are we gonna bond over our shared love of a very dorky thing? Uh, to be fair, P.E. sucks. Guy says TikTok, he's trendy. Shut up. I was gonna make that joke and I was like, that's stupid. I'm not making that joke. So then you did. So now your joke is stupid. Ha <laughs> ha. Uh, what happened to loving green flags for a tag? Yeah, exactly. What the fuck? Going against your own brand. Banana profile picture. Another. <laughs> You're just being a contrarian. Uh, I look closer at the picture that I chose for my PFP. Kalei is right. I had inadvertently chosen a fan art of the main character from my favorite movie series, Detective Dog. Oh, it's like Detective Pikachu, but with a dog. Hanako would say this game deserves three stars because of that. I'm sorry. Of <laughs> the TikTok. LMAO, my joke is stupid, but at least we're trans now. No. <laughs> TikTok on the clock with the yap and don't stop. Exactly. <laughs> Fucking bars! Bars, Dora! Hanako is the evil itch user. Oh, okay, got you. Next to me, Geist is doubled over, chuckling uncontrollably. Wow, you didn't even make it ten minutes before showing him what a weirdo you were. An adult that still watches cartoons for children. <laughs> <laughs> Might as well tell him that you still wet the bed, too. <laughs> Okay, first funny guy slide. First actually funny line. He gagged us. He got our ass. He fucking. <laughs> oh 
my god. He said you still watch anime? <laughs> Fucking kill yourself, loser. No one's ever gonna be your friend. <laughs> oh my god. I can't. Holy shit. <laughs> Yo, all right, whatever. Kalei, does Kalei seem like he hates Detective Dog, guys? I thought you were supposed to be observant. Clearly, he thinks it's cool that we're into some lame shit. So, <laughs> I just thought the art was nice. I, I don't... <laughs> I love Detective Dog. Of course you do, honey. What? What? <laughs> get wrecked. Fucking get wrecked. Holy shit. <laughs> I used to watch that series so much when I was a kid. Uh, I stopped watching the movies for a while, but I was feeling nostalgic last year and I started to watch them again. The music is so like YouTube ad, like happy, happy go time. Like it's so him. It's just it, like every time it comes in. Fuck it. Yeah, guys is just quirky. He's like, I'm not like the other kids. I fucking read books no one reads. And uh, watching cartoons is stupid and for little baby, baby babies. And he's also like, live action is superior because that's for adults. <laughs> like, okay. Okay. They're actually so much better than I remembered. And I noticed so much about them that I didn't appreciate when I was younger. This is my kind of guy. Like how dog's addiction to dog treats is a metaphor for alcoholism. Whoa. And how the tyranny that the cats have over the city is based on imperialism. What? He's so cute. I want to put him in my fucking purse, dude. I'm taking this one home. I like him. I like him. Uh, <laughs> me analyzing cartoons I loved as a fucking kid. That's my man right there. I used ukulele music for all the Kalei's music, and it has such a distinctive sound. That's true, that makes a lot of sense. Five minute crafts! <laughs> Not five minute crafts! It's so true, how to get rid of a blonde twink episode. Yo, honestly, I'm watching that episode to completion. And when Dog stops wearing his collar, he's freeing himself from both his abusive relationship with his wife and the generational trauma that the cats have inflicted on his family. Damn. Eight with that. Honestly, that's probably a better take on any piece of media than Geist ever has. He's like, I just like the book. The book was cool. Can I give you your Hawaiian shirt, Pookie? XOXOXO. <laughs> you just radiates golden retriever energy. No, why does he sound like something I'd say? Yeah, exactly. He's us. So if you hate on Kalei, you're just hating on yourself. Okay, as Kalei continues to chatter about the symbolism of the third detective dog movie, I'm at a loss for words. I've only met a handful of people who still remember Detective Dog. I can still see his expressions of derision in my mind, poisoning my love for the franchise. I've never met anyone who saw it as anything more than a silly children's cartoon before. Kalei gradually stops talking. He rubs the back of his neck, apparently realizing how long he had been rambling. Oh. Uh, oops. I got a little excited. People don't really remember Detective Dog, you know? Uh, what's your favorite entry in the series? so inclusive too wow <laughs> oh my goodness and also when he was like i got a little excited i was like that's all i'm gonna say about that fill in the fucking blanks uh uh, uh um <laughs> classic abram dialogue um i guess the fifth um detective dog versus the virtual phantom I thought the surrealism of the film was interesting, and for once it focused less on the mystery and more on Doc's past as part of the police force and the guilt and trauma that he has as a result. It's also the first film that really explores the corruption inherent in the dog society without blaming everything on the cats. Kalei leans forward, sipping at his coke as he nods. I try to restrain myself when the words tumble out of my mouth before I can catch them. Before long, I'm subjected, just subjecting Kalei to a 30 minute long spiel about the symbolism of the bananas in the film. Still, he never looks annoyed or disinterested. He listens the entire time in rapt attention. When I'm done, he brings up his own thoughts, and soon we're engaged in a lively conversation about the use of food metaphors in the series. And I hope Geist is fucking crying in the corner. <laughs> Joy's mind in the gutter. Sorry! Don't make a hot character then. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say about that. Not Geist gaslighting you to think of Kalei as an overthinker. No. <laughs> I'll be wearing it to my wedding. Before I know it, it's already 3 p.m. We take our plates to the tray, return together, and then we start walking back to the dorms. He lives in the building next to mine. We wave to each other. I take my ID card to swipe into the building. 
It is only then that I realize that Christ has been standing next to me the entire time. He's eerily quiet. His face is cold as a block of ice. He follows me into my dorm room without saying a word. Even as I start on my classics homework, Geist lingers. He crosses his arm and leans against the back wall, watching me. This is the first for him. When he follows me inside, he usually clings to me and doesn't stop talking until he decides to leave. I open up my textbook. Fine. It, it uh, doesn't matter if he stays, just as long as he's quiet. No, for real. Like, you could stay here, but you gotta shut the fuck up. I spend the afternoon and the early evening doing homework. During the time, Geist doesn't leave, but I ignore him. My mind is still running with the cheerful memories of my lunch of Calais. When it gets dark, I sneak out to the common room and make myself some pasta. I lie on my bed, my stomach full of cheap carbs. I fish my phone out of my pocket and unlock it. The bars, uh, the try message icon catches my attention amidst the mess of apps on my homepage. I click the icon and navigate to Calais. I press on the box to start typing a message. However, when the keyboard pops up, my fingers tremble. The mattress creaks. Geist had left his, uh, his home against my back. Had left Geist has left his home against my back wall. He's lying on his side next to me, his head propped up on one hand. He smirks. What are you doing? He just asked for your info to be polite. He doesn't actually want to be your friend. He doesn't like you. Why would he? This afternoon, he was just tolerating you. He was being nice, listening to you blabber ad nauseum about things he couldn't care less about. Kind of like what I'm doing with you right now. If you text him, he'll just shudder and think, Ah, this person again? So soon. How clingy are they? Honestly, uh, the voice actor has moments where they really sound like um, Gideon Emery, as like, who plays Fenris in Dragon Age 2. Because like, sometimes when he talks, I'm like, Fenris? <laughs> Why is Fenris gaslighting me right now? Like, chill. That's actually a huge compliment. It's not as if we need a Calais to love us when we have guys to be us. Save him some headache. Don't text him. Wait, Chime, are you gaslighting me into liking, <laughs> liking guys? Is this a double gaslight adventure? Are you serious right now? In right in front of my salad? Like, what, what are we doing? Save him some headache. Don't text it. My hand freezes up. What if Geist is right? What if Calais really was just being nice? If I text him, I'll be a bother. But... I mean, we're not gonna, we will listen to him this time, but that's because we're getting the bad end first. Hear that? The bad route first. And route, whatever. However this works. I'm getting what I don't want first. <laughs> uh, I can't save you anymore. You are too lost in the Geist and Pals, so I have to save Joy instead. <laughs> Thank you, Butter. Come on to the good side, to the light. Uh, Sean did a really good job here. And it's also so funny because he usually plays good guys and boys. Oh, I'm glad that they got to flex their creative, their voice actor muscles and like hold your salad plate i will sit very hard and i will ignore it <laughs> i put my phone down i shouldn't text him however a few seconds later the device buzzes and the message starts to pop up in the chat hey it's me <laughs> joy don't give in see the light Kalei's a good boy i mean i will i'm just saving him for last unfortunately because we have to save the best for last Kalei, the cs guy i ponder my reply for a second of course, I couldn't forget you. Besides, it's only been a few hours, lol. <laughs> I just wanted to say that I had a lot of fun during lunch. It was super fun talking about Detective Dog. Dog buds! <laughs> you are dog buds! That's us! Whoop! Kitty face! Oh, wait, that's a cat. It's okay, baby. They- Dogs have that little... three thing over the mouth. I chuckle. Yeah, it is. Whoop! <laughs> Calais sends a cute sticker of a dog lying on the beach. I respond with a sticker of a dog lying under a blanket saying that he doesn't want to go to work. <laughs> we trade stickers like that for a few minutes until our chat log is veritable dog park. Oh yeah, I was gonna ask. Are you gonna go tutoring mo Monday? Don't do something that you'll regret. I glare at guys. <laughs> I'll be there. <laughs> Fuck you. It's like, no. Joy, don't... Uh, wait, if... I even simper geist in Kalei's route. You are not safe. Kalei likes cats. Red flag, green flag. I drop my phone on the blanket and roll onto my stomach. My heart is racing, but it's not from nervousness for once. I actually feel happy, excited even. I'm looking forward to Monday. Today's Monday. Oh my gosh, my, my, my Monday. Let's go. I need a soundboard so bad. 
don't do something you'll regret. The only thing I regret is still having you here. Get the fuck out of here. And, like, leave. Read the room. Read a book. Galay and I uh, go tutoring together on Mondays and Fridays. Afterwards, we usually grab a late night snack. We also text a lot between classes in the evenings on the weekends. We chat about a lot of things, though our conversations usually gravitate towards movies. He loves talking about film even more than me, if that's possible. It seems like he has watched every movie produced in the last 30 years, ranging from rom-coms to biopics to horror. I would love to watch a movie with him. And I don't really like watching movies. My mom is a movie buff and I kind of grew out of it because I was just like too many. But I've seen like a lot of movies in that time. My friendship with Clay is so easy that it's almost scary. Chatting with him feels like I'm being carried down a gentle river by the movement of the water. That's so wonderful. It's not difficult or forced, unlike what I'm used to. I think that Clay is cute, is a good friend. Oh, I don't want to friend zone him, but I know what I signed up for. We're doing the worst first. He's a good friend. Kalei is a good friend. I like spending time with him. A month after I start going to tutoring with Kalei, I'm sitting at my desk, scrolling away on my laptop. I often spend my Saturday evenings browsing random online marketplaces. It's relaxing that it feels like a treasure hunt. I've snagged quite a few vintage DVDs for bargain bin prices. Right now, I'm searching for my white whale. I've invested countless hours searching for this movie, but to no avail. My eyes brighten. I finally find what I'm looking for. Young Detective Dog, The Adventure Begins. It's not a part of the original Detective Dog timeline. Instead, it was a minor film that was released direct to video, detailing Detective Dog's impoverished origins as a street puppy. Don't trust that friendship that's supposed is supposed to be easy. You have to struggle through toxic relationships, Abram. That's what it makes worth it. <laughs> it's a valuable piece of the Detective Dog canon filling the gap between the prequel series before Detective Dog and the Butler area era uh, comics uh, detailing his life as a servant to a noble cat family. Young Detective Dog was outsourced to a smaller animation animation studio as a result. It never received that much marketing and only a limited number of prints. It's the only detective dog film that I haven't managed to get my hands on until now. So we're really like, we're an otaku. I didn't realize that we, like, I thought we just liked the damn thing. I didn't realize we were like going this hard for it, but good on us. Good on us. I actually, that's one of my favorite tropes in like media in general is when like a fictional character is in love with a fictional franchise in the story like i just love it very much i think like a lot of anime does it or like even some video games do it there's just something super endearing about a character that cares so much about fiction he's you know obviously relatable but also just like i don't know it's cute it's even cuter when the character who's obsessed with it is like from another world you know like they're not even from the human world but they get obsessed with human media it's adorable I didn't even look at the cost uh, that carefully. I've been searching for this film for months. I'm willing to pay almost any price. As I'm checking out, my phone buzzes. Hey! So you know we were talking about the Mad Gun sequel yesterday. Do you want to go see it? I was thinking about going tomorrow. Oh, the new Mad Gun movie. Kalei and I had chatted about it on our way back to the dorms. Admittedly, I wasn't a fan of the Mad Gun franchise, but I had read rave reviews about the new sequel. I couldn't deny that my interest was piqued. I'm about to text okay when a hand drops on my phone. The pale, taper, <laughs> pale, heavy on that, uh, tapered fingers rest the device from my grasp. The guy strolls to the other side of the room, waving the phone idly. You'd better not. Why? Why not? I could spend time with whoever I want. The guy comes back and leans against the side of my desk. Texting is easy. You have time to think about what you'll say, and there's no pressure to answer right away. Going to tutoring is fine too. After all, you're mostly working on homework. Yeah, but we hang out in between that time, dog. And also, crazy. It, it's so funny because what this also reminds me of is when guys is doing this. It reminds me of like when you're in school, like in high school, they're like, "Hey, you better not do that because in college that shit ain't gonna fly." And then you get to college and they're like, "Hey, they don't give a fuck at all." You know, it's like every like elementary warns you against middle school the middle school words it's like it's not true it's just not true they're just trying to scare you like it's fine i love this trope included it once in my work because i was obsessed with a certain t piece of media and just had to include it lvo oh, that's so cute uh okay daddy guys we will obey <laughs> only this one but going but on my out own with him will be different you'll have to talk to him the entire time can you really do that? I do like the little eye. I like Mr. Polterman. I snatch the phone out of Geis's grasp. However, when I open the try message, my palms are sweaty. What if Geis is right? I tell Kalei. This hurts me. I don't want to do this. 
I don't want to do this, but I gotta be strong. Gotta be strong so we can s finish, like, strong. Sorry, I've got a lot of homework. I'm just not ready to go tomorrow. I have to learn more about Kalei, what he does and doesn't like. I have to practice talking more. I have to come up with topics of conversation. Oh, okay. Maybe next time. I bite my lip. I I'm sorry, Abram. We'll get you someone good soon. Guys is right. Talking would be a nightmare. <laughs> Says the yapper. Says the guy who never stops talking. Yeah, maybe next time. I'll be ready to go next time. Sunday rolls around. I stay in bed until noon, scrolling aimlessly through a detective dog form. When I roll off my mattress, I hobble to the cafeteria to get something to eat. Then I retire back to my dorm to do homework. After I finish my classics and computer science reading, I look at the clock. It's 6 p.m. I groan. Too late to go out to do anything, but too early to go to bed. Might as well watch a movie. I open up my laptop. I spend a few minutes scrolling through a menagerie of cheap horror flicks and holiday-themed rom-coms. Nothing catches my eye, so I settle for one of my usual choices. The movie opens up on a shot of a young girl sitting on a train. The camera slowly zooms out to reveal that the girl is alone, with no guardian in sight. A plain cursive logo appears on the screen. My Christmas. This is an old classic from my childhood. I've seen it over ten times already. The girl, Masako, is a child of divorce. She ran away from home to look for her mother. She wants to spend Christmas with her estranged parent. She encounters an old homeless woman, Hana, who agrees to take her to find her mother. I've seen this movie over ten times already as I watch the familiar sequences and listen to the dialogue I've memorized by heart. My mind drifts elsewhere. The mad gun showing is a long over by now. I wonder if Kalei ended up going. Did he find someone else to go with? How was the movie? Was it fun? Tell me, I only talk because you're all oh my guys. <laughs> Jesus, I could just think of Chai right now, like, how can we make chat as angry as possible? Like, how can we bother them as much as we can? <laughs> That's what Geist does all day, too. Geist is literally just moving goalposts constantly. Oh, he won't want your number. Okay, maybe he does. But it wasn't for real. Okay, it was for real. But talking through a text is not real talking. So <laughs> um, Jim truly believes in no pain, no gain. He wants to go to the Alpha Male Boot Camp. No, for real. <laughs> See you on the other side, my friend. What if Kalei never invites me to do anything ever again? I didn't want to go today, and I probably wouldn't want to go tomorrow either, but a small part of me wants to go out to see a movie with him someday. I hug my pillow tighter. I can already feel the cold fingers of regret creeping into the back of my mind. My mattress creaks. Geist kicks off the Oxford shoot. <laughs> and scoots next to me on the bed, leaning against oh, me. I always love this part. It's brilliant can't help but tear up every time I see it. I hope you do cry, my man. It would make this easier. <laughs> on screen, Hana leaves Masako on the street as she approaches a well-kept countryside house. Masako's mother opens the door. She's carrying a baby. A two-year-old clings to her, her legs. When she sees Hana, she shrinks back, visibly disgusted by Hana's disheveled appearance. I hold my breath as my shoulders tense. No matter how many times I see it, this scene always manages to twist my heart like a wrung rag. His voice is voice. His voice is voice. Guys, my mermaid sings for my angel view. <laughs> Not the Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera. Wow. Oh my God. Hane explains that Masako came to find her mother, but the woman just shakes her head. I'm not the girl's mother anymore, she says, then shuts the door. My mind drifts to Kalei again. What if he doesn't want to be friends anymore? What if he never texts me again? Maybe he'll assume that I don't like him because I rejected his invite. On screen, Hana turns around to see Masako's forlorn face. Was that Mama? The girl asks, her eyes wide. My eyes sting. I'm not sure if it's because of the movie or the agitated thoughts running around my head. Masako's expression here is simply heartbreaking. Such a good performance from a child actress. Okay, you can say that a little less creepy next time, guys, I think. I think you could say that a little less weird. Uh, Hana kneels down and hugs Masako. It's a touching scene, the emotional climax of the film. Masako finds her mother, even if she isn't related by blood, and Hana embraces the daughter she never knew she wanted. Kalei probably hates me now. I'm sure that he's tired of my existence and already erased me from Try Message. Hana and Masako return to Masako's father, who is distraught with worry. There's a time skip to spring. The screen pans over so several beautiful shots of cherry blossoms. Hana is clean, wearing new clothes. She holds Masako's hand as the pair walk to the girls' school. The perfect happy ending. Mother and child walking side by side to a new future. See, we can spend amazing moments with guys. We don't need Kalei. <laughs> Uh, I'm not gonna lie, Geist is kind of similar to the Phantom, but the Phantom was sexy all along and had a British accent. Impl- whoa, what? Hey, hey, hey. Two steps back. The Phantom isn't sexy chatter? Because I beg to differ. 
I think the fan of the opera is very sexy <laughs> in every iteration. Amazing, Chim. I'm concerned for your standard. <laughs> the room instantly darkens at the credits. <laughs> I like how the singular stream is gonna make Chime <laughs> like undo all the hard work that they have in terms of like what their actual taste is. <laughs> Because of Geist's mere existence. Chatter, you've done it again. You're so right. I'm sorry for my sins. The Phantom was sexy. <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. You're forgiven. The room instantly darkens as the credits scroll over a black background. Small children's doodle uh, dance along the side of the screen. I squeeze my eyes shut. I ruined everything. Why do I always ruin everything? Every single- well, uh, just take one look to your right and I think you'll figure out why. <laughs> Hello, Tavi. I have been referring to the eyeball as Poulter this whole time because I loved that you gave it that name. It's so cute. And also we hate Geist, so we're getting him first so we can get him out of the way. Geist traces circles around my knuckles. Each slow movement erases some of the disquiet from my mind. I unconsciously lean against the blonde man. For some reason, I'm exhausted. I just want to stop thinking, to stop worrying. Geist welcomes the contact, nuzzling against me. He, w <laughs> he whispers into my ear. I can tell that he's smiling. He delights in my vulnerability. See? <laughs> that was fun, wasn't it? You didn't even want to see that movie with Calais anyway. Your weekends are precious. This way you got to spend it watching a movie you love. With me. Just keep telling yourself that, my friend. <laughs> My heart is just breaking. Clay, you shall get your moment later. He will, I promise. He sounds so. Sad. Oh, God. Uh, everyone hates you. <laughs> Got him. Um, yeah, I guess. I'm too tired to offer a rebuttal. I curl up on the mattress. Guy shuts the laptop. He leans down and presses a kiss against the back of my hand. I do love hand kisses, though. Guys, don't ruin this for me. I a kiss against the back of my hand, his lips ghosting up. Nice. Ghosting over my clenched it fingers. It was fun. I'll see you again. This dude is, like, only getting crumbs as well. Like, all we did was watch a movie we've seen a thousand times and fucking cried. Our borderline cried, just got sad, and then he's like, oh my god, this is so good. I wish there was more of this in my life. <laughs> no, don't leave. No, leave. Despite my worries, Kalei meets me in the following Monday with the same smile that he always wears. I don't think that his smile is fake. I can only hope that it isn't fake. It is fake. I am Geist now. It is fake and he is faking it. He has a fake smile. Can't you see it? Can't you feel his fake smile on upon you? <laughs> it's like, shut up. Hi, is the Geist root? I didn't have the heart to play it on my own. Did you really? Okay. Yeah, I wanted to start with it first because I love Kalei very much and I want to, you know, save the best for last. Plus, we always get the bad ends first and all that. It's important to me. You never end on a bad note. Uh, I admire the concluding paragraph to my classics paper. It came out rather well, if I do say so myself. I'm spending another Saturday evening at the library, as I often do. It's been a couple of weeks since Kalei invited me to go to the movies. It's already 10 p.m. I groan. Hopefully I have something in my dorm room to eat for dinner. I pack up the laptops laptop books <laughs> and paper scattered over the desk and head to the library exit also every time guys gaslights us i keep forgetting to drink water my bad <laughs> all this unhealthy gotta counterbalance it with something healthy you know what i mean there are hundreds of people outside the plaza is filled with blaring music it's a boisterous rock song with dramatic crescendos the theme song from a recent halloween themed blockbuster it's halloween they must be having a party Wow, how do you figure that one out? <laughs> Guys is standing next to me. He strides in front when he's standing at the end of the steps. He turns back towards me and bows, gesturing ugh, towards the crowd with one arm. He's acting like he's ushering in my arrival to a royal ball. Shall we go? <laughs> oh, God, if I do say so but myself, but Abram, did you ask Guys before having an opinion? I'm not gonna lie, you'd probably be out of the water already if you did that. I take a step down. My legs are shaking. There are so many people. They swarm around me, pressing against my body. The smell of smoke is sickeningly sweet, wrapping around me like a vice. A tall student rams into my shoulder, spilling a few drops of my beer on my hoodie. I try to breathe, but no matter how deeply I inhale it, it feels like my lungs are being filled with sand. I take a step, it's like a waiting for mud. 
music is so loud I can't even hear myself think. There are flashing lights everywhere. The students are uh, wearing glow sticks around their necks and wrists. They look like fireflies swaying in the dark. Risk-iced. For once I look around for him, aching to see that blonde head. <laughs> A familiar beacon in the sea of shadows, but he's nowhere to be found. My vision is getting blurry. The shadow of the students around me all blend together, pressing against me, squeezing the breath from my lungs. My legs buckle, and soon I'm kneeling on the pavement. I try to stand back up, but I'm shaking too much. If I move, I'll topple over. My heart is pounding, beating like a war drum. I feel like I'm going to be sick. I look up. Everyone is staring. They look down at me, their eyes driving into me like knives. Some of them turn to each other, talking, gossiping about me. Here you are, the center of attention. The star. Go on, put on a show. Show them what a mess you are. I can't see him, but I know that guy is behind me. It's getting hard to hear, it's getting hard to see too. It feels like I'm drowning in the depths of the ocean. The only thing that I can hear clearly is Geist's sardonic voice whispering in my ear. The only thing that I can feel clearly is his breath against my neck. I'm gasping for breath. I'm suffocating. Hey, him. are you okay? Yeah, I am now. Oh my gosh, he's our lifeguard. <laughs> A fuzzy figure is kneeling in front of me. I can't see who it is. My vision is too blurry. When I don't reply, he puts a reassuring hand on my shoulder, urging me to Come stand. On. Let's sit down somewhere. Carry me away. Kalei is so Disney prince coded, it's insane. Uh, see, that's why he's been keeping us inside the whole time. He absolutely didn't make us go to this party just to emotionally manipulate us. Guys would never. Exactly. <laughs> he tugs on my sleeve, leading me through the people surrounding us. As we walk, the crowd thins, the music quiets, and the smell of smoke weakens. He opens the door and guides me inside. I look around, my mind is still fuzzy, but I can tell that we're back in the library foyer. The boy sits me down on one of the couches. It's hard to focus, I try to concentrate on his feet. I can only think about one thing. Why is this guy wearing socks with sandals? Hey, hey, hey! Let him live his fucking life. You've got a British ghost who reads so pretentiously in your head at all times. We can't judge fucking anybody. We can't judge a goddamn person for anything. Uh, Kalei is honestly the sweetest. Just big brother energy. Very sweet. Very considerate. Do you mind if I sit with you? No. I don't mind. I want to... <sighs> I'm gonna scream. Okay. What? I brought this upon myself, but still. It doesn't hurt any less. I want to be alone. <laughs> uh, I want to be alone, sorry. Um, okay. Text me if you need anything. I'll be around. Shoot. I squeeze my eyes shut and try to breathe slowly, but I can't stop shaking. The air scrapes into my lungs like sandpaper, grating against my trachea. When I look up again, Kalei is gone. I lean my elbows on my knees and bury my hand in my hands. My head in my hands. My heart won't stop pounding, threatening to burst out from my chest. Cold fingertips trace along my chin. <laughs> Tipping my face, I'm gazing into the hair of emerald eyes, like two leaves in the sun. <laughs> An ultimate red flag, socks with sandals. How can anyone like Halei after that? Gotta get a guy who will stand by you when you have a panic attack. Uh, the ultimate lifesaver for introverts. True. Very true. Honestly, when I saw Halei's design, the sandal thing was the first thing I thought <laughs> Exactly. He has trail mix in his pocket. Don't worry about him. He wears cargo shorts. Like, who cares? Which one of us is sick again? <laughs> like, guy surprises me. His gaze flicking over my wrinkled sweatshirt and my teary eyes. I'm biting my bottom lip in an attempt to stop him from trembling. The blonde man's emotions are inscrutable. Is he angry? Worried? I can't tell. His face is blank. It's as if he's still deciding what expression to wear. Like he's picking a jacket from his wardrobe. His visage uh, twists into a look of pity. He looks at me as if I'm an injured puppy lying in the rain. He sighs. I knew that this would happen. So fragile. You're like fine china. You're not fit to be paraded around in front of the masses. You'll chip and crack like you are right now. We're Chip from Beauty and the Beast. That's us. <laughs> Guy straps his arm around me, burying my face into the crook of his neck. You're okay. I'm here for you. I'm not going anywhere. Two emerald eyes like pools of vomit. <laughs> My proudest part of the design. He looks really good, though. He looks very good. Look at how helpless you are. Just like a little lamb. You need me. I thought he was going to break out in the song for like two seconds. There. He's going to be like, 
Abram is a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. And Don't I... worry. I'll protect you from everyone. No one will touch you while I'm here. Well, that would have been useful like two seconds ago when people were bumping into us left and right, but, you know, I guess better late than never. I squeeze my eyes shut. I don't want to see. I pretend I do not see. You say emotional manipulation. I say tomato. <laughs> Guys is holding me tightly, so tightly that I feel as if my ribs are going to break. But his touch isn't comforting. Instead, it feels cold, like I'm being suffocated in a blanket of ice. My heart isn't slowing. It's shaking in my chest like an animal, trying to escape its cage. No matter how deeply I breathe, it still feels like I'm drowning. I don't know how long it takes me to recover, locked in Geis's embrace. By the time that I recover enough to stand up, most of the partygoers have gone back inside. I make my way back on shaky legs, holding onto Geis's hands for dear life. He walks slowly, keeping my pace. When we reach my dorm building, he pulls me into one last hug before waving goodbye. I shiver and go inside, slamming the door behind me. I hate this voiceover. It makes me feel things even though the text makes me sick. This is a compliment. It is. I groan into my pillow. I can't believe what I did last night in front of Calais of all people. I bet he's gossiping to all of his friends right now. The weirdest thing happened to me last night. A freak had a complete breakdown in the middle of the main plaza. Crazy, right? <laughs> That was a good impression, not gonna lie. But also, like, at least he has friends. The blonde man dangles the phone in front of my face. He texted you. Shouldn't you hurry and see what it's about? Ooh. Okay, Morgana, I'll answer my text, don't worry. I bat the phone away and turn around. I want to stop time, I want to curl up in a corner and hide forever so that I never have to see Calais again. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure Calais is gossiping, cluing character for him. He's a villain! <laughs> he has socks and sandals! I missed that one, my god. Uh, the phone buzzes once more, but real life doesn't have a remote. I can't uh, hit pause on it because I'm feeling overwhelmed. I roll back over and reluctantly accept the phone from Geis. Hey, how you feeling? Okay? Villainous dialogue, let me tell you. I was kind of worried, just wanted to check out your doing. Do you need anything? I squeeze my eyes shut, composing myself before I reply. I'm okay. I don't know what happened last night. The sort of thing doesn't usually happen to me. I'm sorry for bothering you. Nah, don't worry. I'm just glad you're all good. I was wondering, are you busy? Tonight? Stop asking me, Kalei! I have to keep turning you down and I wanna! Me and, my, me and some friends are getting together to watch a movie. It's called The Social Experiment. Wanna come? We'll prob talk, uh, we'll prob talk story after. It's gonna be a pizza. And fun! <laughs> My lips curl into a smile after our first text exchange. The kitty face has uh, become something of an inside joke. Yes. Yes, go on. Accept. Now you can put on an encore performance. You can curl up on the floor in front of Calais and all of his friends and have a complete mental breakdown. Again. I mean, that barely happened to begin with. It was fine. That won't happen. Last night was different. That never happens to me. There were just too many people. This is small and private. If anything happens, I could just say I need to go to the bathroom or something. Guy's places a, f a finger under my chin, dipping my face up. But I have to look at him. <laughs> Do you really believe that? Sure, you're going to go out with a bunch of strangers and have a fantastic time. By the end of it all, you'll be best friends for life. What kind of fantasy land are you living in? Has that ever happened to you? Even once? No, but, I mean, it's as likely to happen as anything else. Geis' words radiate cold. They send chills running through my limbs, making the hairs on my arms stand on end. If you say yes, it can only go poorly. You will embarrass yourself. You won't even get along with his friends. What if they start mocking you because of how socially inept you are? <laughs> you know, this is so much better hanging out with you, who isn't at all mocking me. <laughs> so, I mean... Is anything really gonna change? I can't tolerate this Kalei accusation. Be gone, demon. <laughs> it was trying to poison the chat. This is disgusting. Kalei is a monster. Kalei is the ultimate angel. Abram keeps <laughs> keeps buying lottery tickets, guys. He's a believer. <laughs> yeah, you like what is it? Like ninety percent of all gamblers like quit before they hit it big or whatever. <laughs> We're an optimist. After Kalei's route, Geis' words feel truly poisonous for me. I hate him as you should. Say no. I'm going to, but I don't want to, and I hope you know that. <laughs> you could read my mind. You know where I'm at. I'll decline. 
I've already got plans. Sorry. When I send the message, I shut the app and squeeze my eyes shut. It only takes a few seconds for the phone to ding with the familiar notification. Ah, next time then. Don't worry, it was my fault. It wasn't! Asking you all of a sudden- No! Not him apologizing! Uh, hope whatever you've got going on is awesome. It's not. <laughs> Trust to believe it isn't. Uh, see you Monday. I toss my phone onto the bedspread. Next to me, a guy smiles smugly. You shouldn't really be that smug. You handled it very well. Uh, I spend a couple of hours scrolling on my phone and watching silly videos online. Eventually, my stomach growls, telling me to go to the cafeteria. I sneak into the dining hall, peering in and sweeping eyes all around for signs of the familiar sky blue baseball cap. Ooh, if we cancel on him and then we're just sitting in the cafeteria, that looks really fucking bad. Um, Calais is nowhere to be seen. Not that I expected to see him here, but it doesn't hurt to be careful. I pull the hood over my head a little tighter before sneaking past the cashier to display the cooler on the other side of the cafeteria. I peruse the selection of sandwiches wrapped in shiny plastic. I choose a... Ooh, spicy chicken salad sandwich. Oh my god, that's what I choose. Roasted vegetable sandwich. Let's go with mozzarella. I pick a mozzarella sandwich with sun-dried tomatoes out of the cooler. I take my prize to the cashier and hand her my ID. After the purchase is complete, I go out the door, shivering as the icy air penetrates my lungs. It's not freezing, but it's so cold enough that I can see faint white puffs as I exhale. I wander to a secluded uh, corner of the campus, near the performing arts building. I sit on a nearby bench, the cold wood stinging my skin. I bite into my sandwich, the bread is cold. The creamy pesto smeared mozzarella and tangy tomatoes slide down my throat. I choke down half of the sandwich, barely tasting my meal. I should have bought up a drink, too. Guilt bubbles up in my stomach. Clay had gone through the trouble of inviting me to meet his friends. He had gone out of his way to be nice to me, and I threw his kindness back in his face. He reached out to me, and I lied to him. For what? Because I was uncomfortable? Afraid? Of what? Talking to a few strangers? What kind of adult is afraid of talking to strangers? What miserable excuse of a human being can't muster up the willpower to exchange a few nice-to-meet-yous with some new people? I'm pathetic. I'm so pathetic. Why is Kalei trying to be friends with someone like me? I squeeze my hands around the sandwich. It feels icy in my fingers. <sighs> Come now. Don't cry. No, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. That, he's here again. He sits next to me on the bench. He wipes away the tears sprouting from the corners of my eyes before sliding his hand onto my shoulder. The guy scrubs the small of my back, easing away the tension. He's unexpectedly quiet. When he appears, he usually doesn't stop talking, but this time he sits, waiting for my sniffles to subside. His voice is soft and soothing, like a warm blanket tinged with the scent of lavender. Look up at the sky. Okay, gotta go. Uh, I don't know if I'll come back, so bye everyone. Have a nice gaslight. I mean, gaslight. <laughs> Thank you, Darrell. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, look up at the sky. I hesitate before looking up. The sky is hazy from light pollution, but up above I can see stars twinkling in the distance, far above the city lights. I breathe deeply in and out. The cold night air courses through my, my lungs, refreshing me from the inside out. That's beautiful, right? Yeah. I now See... This isn't so bad, is it? You like being by yourself. With me. It's the only time that you can be comfortable. <laughs> Let's look up at the sky and make a wish. Like Princess Adelaide. How dare you bring Adelaide into this? How dare you? Right now? I wish for guys to become material. Stop. See, this isn't so bad, is it? You like being by yourself with me. It's the only time you get... If you had, had accepted Calais' invitation... You'd be stuck for hours in some small room with strangers. It would have been nothing but an awkward experience for everyone. Who knows when you would have been able to leave. Now you can spend your Friday night relaxing under the stars. After you eat, you can go back home and watch that show that you've been meaning to catch up on. Maybe you can go to the library and get a head start on your homework. Not him, like, giving us a to-do list. <laughs> Can you imagine if he had this sort of... Maybe you should go home and code the next chapter of your visual novel. And then you should make dinner. Do not order McDonald's. Do not get it at your house. Do not DoorDash. Don't do this. Go to bed. Actually, take your pill before you go to bed. Like, shut up. Oh, my God. That uh, guy just wants Avril to be recognized and understood for who he is. He's basically analyst when you think about it. You didn't refuse Calais' invite because you were afraid. You did it because you know what you like. And you wanted to spend this time alone. You lied to him to spare his feelings. That's not a crime. 
Uh, more seriously, I do find guys very dangerous here because the idea that there is nothing wrong in spending time by yourself if that's what you want is a healthy one, and he pretends that's what he's doing uh, when he's actually gatekeeping uh, Abram from meeting others despite clearly wanting to- yeah, mm -hmm. Guy says Annalise and Abram is Henry, they even both have the social anxiety- Stop! Stop it! Got it out. But no, no, yeah. The, the gaslighting is really good because it's like if you genuinely are struggling, it's hard as fuck to make new friends. Even if you're someone like me who is like a lot more extroverted, like, you know, you still have a social battery. Like you still like get anxiety before you go and do things, you know, and if you had somebody physically there telling you and confirming some of your, you know, not so great thoughts, uh, then it would be easy to fall into. Now, granted, I would never listen to a British man to save my goddamn life. Um, but, you know, that's just me. <laughs> Abram's better than me. <laughs> and this is why, everyone, we don't listen to men. Got it? I'm just joking. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Other people want to go and party, but you're not like that. You like the solitude, the quiet. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just the way you are. Not him Bruno Marsing us. I don't know if Geist is lying, but I want to believe him. His words are fine liquor, Ugh. intoxicating me and numbing my pain. My worries settle, buried underneath a thick layer of Geist's placitation. Are you Pla feeling all right now? That word. <laughs> I've been better. I instinctively lean against Geist, who puts an arm around my shoulder. He's not warm, but his presence is comfort nonetheless. I'm not sure if I'm feeling all right, but it doesn't hurt as much. My raw self-hatred has dulled to a vague ache. It returns to a corner of my uh, brain to sleep until it finds an opportunity to rear its ugly head again. Yeah. I finish the rest of my sandwich, which is even colder than before. After that, I relax into Geist's hold, gazing up at the sky. Yo, literally my nightmare. Also, I chose the one with sun-dried tomatoes because I hate sun-dried tomatoes. So not only is it bad that we're hanging out with guys, but we're also eating sun-dried tomatoes. And that's got to be like the worst <laughs> combination that exists. Uh, completely correct. All men are cows. <laughs> yes, let's not listen to men. Let's only listen to goats. <laughs> no! <laughs> I made the right choice. Uh, around a month has passed since Calais invited me to meet his friends. I lounge on my bed, scrolling through my feed. Is it Calais? I scan my notifications. It's not. Instead, I got an email. I run down to the mailroom. When I talk to the student that's manning the desk, my excitement is so high that I can get the words out without stumbling over them. Minutes later, I'm clutching the package to my chest like it's the most precious treasure. In my room, I carefully open the box. A DVD case covered in slightly worn plastic is lying amidst the crumpled up newspaper. Young detective dog, the adventure begins. I can't suppress the grin spreading on my face. I've been wanting to see this film for so long. I open up my desk to search for my DVD player, but then I pause. I wonder if Kalei would want to watch this. When we were talking about the franchise before, he mentioned that he hasn't watched this one. I'm not surprised it's not available online and physical copies are hard to come by. Should I invite him over? I've never invited anyone over. In fact, I've never invited anyone to hang out, period. When I did spend time with friends, they were always the ones to reach out. Some small, deep part of my heart always believed that if I asked someone out, they would feel burdened, that spending time with me was a chore, that they had much better things to do than be with me. But this is different, right? Kalei would want to see the movie too, and maybe, just maybe, he would have fun with me. See, even Abram agrees this is the right choice. Abram is like... They're hypnotized right now. They're, they're not at their best. Don't worry. Nah, you shouldn't invite him over. You clearly know Geist is gonna tell you no. I take out my phone. My, not us having to ask Geist to do anything. Guys, can I go pee now? Guys, can I go to the grocery store? Guys, can they, they, they shut up. Man doesn't even have a name. This is the name we gave him. And then you just stuck with it too. I take out my phone. My fingers hovering over the try message icon. Was a green in here? Stop. Okay. Geist is sitting on the bed, leaning over me. He reaches over and tries to take the phone out of my grasp. But this time I don't let go. I rest my hands from his grip. What do you think is happening with that guy? Oh. What? Is he your bestie? Your bestie. dear friend? Maybe he even <laughs> likes you. Yeah, he definitely does. I don't want to listen to this. I push Geist off of me. I get up and grab my headphones from my desk, but his voice slips past the headphones, uh, snaking into my eardrums like he did when I started this game. Uh, Geist Ghana is just gonna tell you to go to sleep, you're tired. 
Oh, I like the 3D effect. Get your head out of the clout. He tolerates you because he wants someone to go to tutoring with. If he had anyone else, he wouldn't even look at you. I love the amount of hoops that guys has to jump through just to like make us feel bad. I turn away and crouch down, pressing the headphones so hard over my ears that it feels like I'm crushing my skull. He doesn't like you. He never liked you. No one likes you. Geist embraces me from behind, squeezing me tightly. He rests his chin on my shoulder. I love you. I only have your best interests at heart. Hi, Lacey. <laughs> We're being ga <laughs> Geist lit right now. This is Geist. He's our ghost yandere man, and he loves us. <laughs> and he is trying to keep us away from the hotter, objectively better guy in the game. And because I want to save the hotter, better, objectively guy in the game, I'm saving him for last, so I'm doing the ghost yandere first. No, Lacey, stop. Do not bring this energy in here. He's the worst. He's annoying. And he's British. <laughs> we all know that Kalei is a jerk who spreads rumors about us because it makes sense. We trust guys blindly in this household. The world is dangerous. I'm trying to protect you. You can't trust anyone. They all hate you. They all wish that you would just disappear from the face of the earth. His voice is scalding and freezing at the same time. Honey that drips into my ears, burning my eardrums like acid. If you trust them, if you let them in, they'll all hurt you eventually. You haven't even seen the other guy, Lacey. Trust. Trust. The, tu the tune will change. <laughs> he takes the phone out of my grasp. My grip too limp to hang on any longer. But that's okay. I'm here for you. You only need me. I mean, we got no choice. Hey, I like that you have no choice. Geist's touch is chilly, but it's comforting at the same time. Feels like I'm lying on a blizzard, lying in a blizzard, watching the snow pile on top of me until it entombs me in a blanket of ice. I turn around and bury my head in Geist's chest. He stiffens as if he didn't expect the affection, but he accepts me. He strokes my back, resting his chin on my head. Is it okay that I'm a mess? Of course it's okay. I'll love you no matter how messed up you are. Is it okay that I ruin everything? That I make everyone unhappy? That everyone will hate me eventually? It doesn't matter if you ruin everything. I'll be there to dry your tears and pick up the pieces. <laughs> Guys really said, go burn down a hospital, sweetie. I'll support you. Ooh, guys, I'll, I'll also love you no matter how messed up you are. It doesn't matter if everyone hates you. I'm here. I'll always be here. His voice is soft and gentle, softer and gentler than I had ever heard. You're perfect the way you are. You don't need to be someone that you're not. You're not a social butterfly or a party animal. You like being alone. That's okay. I wouldn't want you to change for anyone. You're happy right now, right? Just as you are with me. Sure, lies. <laughs> he strokes my head. I breathe slowly, my lashes fluttering against Guy's cashmere turtleneck. <laughs> wow, <laughs> I'm so happy right now. Holy shit, wow. See the smile? <laughs> Low-key dangerous here, little guys is very strong. I don't know if I feel happy, exactly. I don't feel any pangs of dopamine coursing through my brain, no sparks of excitement, no soothing serotonin. I just feel a little dull, like everything is far away. I'm only attached to my body by a thread. It feels as if Geist's embrace is protecting me from everything, including my own raw thoughts and feelings. At least it doesn't hurt, I guess, that I feel calm. Is that what being calm feels like? I don't know, I don't know anymore. I just nod. The guy feels me move against his chest. He leans down and presses his lips against my That's head. That's right. You're happy. You're just accepting yourself. And that's okay. You're perfect. I love you the way you are. This bro loves to repeat the same shit. <laughs> I ended up offering to uh, lend Kalei the DVD. He accepted it happily, and after he watched it, we had a lively discussion about young detective dog 
after our introductory computer science class ended and the new semester started, my text with Kalei slowed down to a trickle. We didn't have any reason to keep chatting, so we just text each other every once in a while. We don't share any classes either, so we stopped meeting entirely. I still see him around campus sometimes, but I never say hi. And so, whatever relationship that we had mostly withered away. Humans' relationships are fragile like that. If you stop watering them, they waste away in an instant. Kalei wasn't any different. He was the same as everyone else. The Geist is different. He never leaves me. Even if I don't see him, I know that he's there. I lie in bed, my head resting on a guy- Ugh, God! Uh, my sunny spring Saturday. But I feel oddly tired, so I decide not to go out today. On my laptop, dog runs from the police, taking refuge in the shadows of bridge overlooking a canal. This is the seventh time that I've watched Young Detective Dog, The Adventure Begins. Although it was exciting to watch the first time, now it's more of a habit. I can remember each line, each twist and turn of the story. Not gonna lie, he's getting at me with kind words like these. <laughs> we are so weak. <laughs> I am perfect the way I am, so it means I should never stop loving guys. <laughs> Somehow I can't bring myself to watch new things nowadays. It's emotionally exhausting getting invested in new characters and not knowing how things will turn out, so I bask in the comforting familiarity of old movies and shows. Yo, using that against me, because that's me as fuck, when my anxiety's really high, I just rewatch the same shit over and over again. Like, I can't. That's how you know that my anxiety's bad. But if I'm playing new things or, like, experiencing new things, I'm good. My phone buzzes as I check the screen. A text from Kalei. I consider answering, but I put the device down without reading the notification. Too tired to respond right now. I'll answer later. Yeah, we're gonna fail college at this rate. Uh, guy smiles and takes the phone. He leans over and places it on my desk. Out of reach. He places his hand on my shoulder, his presence a soothing weight. The movie passes by in a blur. By the time I know it, we're already in the last scene. After successfully taking down the real culprit, Dog is approached by the wealthy cat lady who will become his master. He puts on his hat and looks into the distance. I don't know what will happen to me from now on, but I know one thing. I'm not just a poor orphan dog. He gets into the cat's car, and the screen fades to black. The credits start to roll. I shut my laptop, not bothering to pause the video player or put the DVD away, and get up and start rearranging my blanket. Are you sleepy? Thinking of taking a nap? I think you're sleepy and taking a nap. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get under my blanket. I hadn't bothered changing out of my pajamas today, so I don't need to change my clothes. Oh, that's a pretty CV. <laughs> he went to the alpha boot camp for this. <laughs> Guy slides down next to me, pressing it. He won't even give us a kiss on the lips. This dude is beta. Beta male. <laughs> Dang, I should have asked Joy to voice that guy. <laughs> Good night. I'll be here when you wake up. What is this? Did he, like, pretend that he's married to us with this? Like, what is this? <laughs> is he cosplaying? It's okay. This is just the way I am. This is me. This is real. This is me. I like being alone. Alone with Geist. Geist wraps his arms around me and sighs. His breath tickling. <laughs> the back of my neck. It's okay. Even if no one else likes you. Even if they tolerate your presence. <laughs> I love you. I'll never leave you. Yeah, you've said that like 10 times. Shut up! <laughs> Even when we give him what he wants, he doesn't shut up. Uh, as I lie under my blanket, uh, wrapped in the man's embrace, a heavy fatigue drapes over me. Yeah, because men talking is fucking exhausting. Like, get me out of here. Uh, somehow, nothing seems to matter anymore. And that's all right. Wow, thank you for taking the time to play. And thank you to everyone who's supported development. I make other romance uh, games with Dark Twist too. If you're interested, you can check out the link here. For anyone who has mental health struggles, know that you're not alone. I hope that you all have more days where Geist is a little quieter than usual. See, I hope you have days where Geist shuts the fuck up. All right, Abram, now for the real playthrough. <laughs> Don't worry about it, we got you. We got you. Never leave me. Wow, super end of stream. We don't need to see the non-existing route. <laughs> oh, he is like warm sunshine. Uh, offer to help. The boy looks up, eyes brightening in interest. I edge closer. He scoots over to make room for me. There, you didn't increment your counter variable, so the loop never stops running. Ah, uh, so that's what it was. <laughs> He types the correction and runs the program. It runs without freezing, even though it doesn't output the correct answer. You saved me. Whew, thank you. Uh, what's your name? I'm Kalei. 
He's so... I really do love his voice. Like, it's just so tender. And look, Geis' voice actor is great. Like, they did a great job. Uh, but they also are like, I'm... You're gonna eat your sandwich at home, and you're going to like it. <laughs> like, okay. I can't handle it. Now we get to wave at that random lady. We're still gonna let's listen to an audiobook again. Elevate all the invitation of the balloon. <laughs> let's wave at the lady. Hello, nice lady. Hello. I attentively raise my hand, keeping it close to my body. Her eyes flash over me for a second before she looks past me, waving more enthusiastically. I look over my shoulder. Another girl is jogging out of the library. Feels like someone dunked my heart into ice water. I hurriedly track my hand, pretending that I'm adjusting the straps of my backpack, but I know that it's already too late. Geist's voice is piercing, effortlessly penetrating the headphones that are shielding my ears. Oh, humiliating. How could you have ever thought she was waving at you? <laughs> you barely know her. You've talked to her a couple of times. That doesn't mean you're friends. Semantics. Uh, my mouth tightens, my eyes burn. He's right. Of course she couldn't have been waving at me. We barely know each other. We're not friends. I turn up the volume on my phone. But you guys could start to be friends. You don't know. Um, <laughs> but yes, Calais VA has such a warm voice. Nah, you gotta commit and keep waving. No, yeah, exactly. Just fucking, just full on force them to wave. Assert your dominance. Make her feel weird. Yeah. <laughs> That's what alphas do. That's what real alphas do. He has a point. We are humiliated. Everyone will mock us on campus now because we waved someone who wasn't waving at me. Our entire life is going to fall apart now. I turn up the volume of my phone and walk faster. I just want to get home as quick as possible. However, even with my headphones blaring over my ears, Guy's voice still haunts me. That's right. Pretend that you don't see anyone. Pretend that you don't hear anyone. If you don't talk to them, they'll never hurt you. Only I will. He he he. Lazy, you're so strong. <laughs> I really want to eat the. Right, we're going for the mushrooms again. Abram's still Abram at the end of the day. It's not bad. I'm still cool. Don't worry. <laughs> Guy's just crying in the corner. Text Calais! Get wrecked! <laughs> they should be waving at me. <laughs> I bob onto my side, facing away from guys he snorts. What do I say? I can't sound too casual. We're not that friendly, but I shouldn't sound too formal either. Should I add emojis? How many? Should I say hi or hello or hey? Would thanks or thank you be better? Should I apologize for talking so much or should I thank him for listening? I did joke about how like I should put I should have just played as Chris, but honestly, like this is Chris's thoughts half the time. Jesus Christ! But guys can't have that. He can't. Just don't answer. It will save you the questioning. After typing and retyping the message several times, I eventually come up with something that I'm happy with. Hi, sorry to bother you. I just wanted to say it was really fun talking to you today. Thanks. As soon as I hit the send button, I smash my head into the pillow. Uh, guy sighs. Oh, could you be any more awkward? What is this? A thank you email after a job interview? The social ineptitude is dripping off your text. <laughs> he said, could you be any more awkward? Okay, Chandler, relax. I groan. I wish there was an unsend button. He's so mean. I love him. <laughs> sometimes he does eat, though. Like, sometimes he does say some shit that's really funny. My phone buzzes. I squeeze my eyes shut, smothering my face with a pillow as I get ready to look at the screen. Hey, you texted me. Yay. <laughs> no, I should thank you. It was super fun talking about Detective Dog. Dog buns. <laughs> woof. Oh, wait, that's a cat. I chuckle. Yeah, it is. Uh, woof. Kelly sends a cute. Oh, they're so cute. I don't want to see you guys look sad. Are you gonna tutor don't do something that you'll oh, regret? Oh, he says the same shit. Don't worry about it. I'll make him cry. Kelly is cute, which is mildly putting it. The man is fine. Fine with a capital F. O U. Fine. Uh, Kalei is so hi. <laughs> He's so me. Kalei is cute. I don't think he would ever be interested in me in that way, but. A month after I start going to tutor with Clay, I'm sitting at my desk scrolling away on my laptop. I often spend my Saturday nights scrolling, yeah, yeah, looking for the detective dog, the origins. I tell Clay, 
Okay. I grit my teeth. Making conversation is no big deal. I can do it. Talking with Clay is easy anyway. I'd love to go. Great. Uh, I'll come pick you up at 11. I respond with a thumbs up. We're a millennial. <laughs> uh, Guy leans over to me, his displeasure slathered over his face. He smells like mint, sharp and cold. I warned you. Just wait. You'll see what happens. Are you gonna cry? Are you gonna cry, baby? Oh, fuck. <laughs> Uh, I pick up my pillow and throw it at him, but he's already gone. I sit on my bed, breathing hard. The wan man is gone, but the butterflies in my stomach aren't going away. Instead, they're just flapping their wings more and more violently, churning my guts into soup. Why? I hope that Geist is wrong. Don't we all? Man, that was awesome. I was wondering if it was gonna be some cheap cash grab, considering it's been 20 years since the last installment. But it was really interesting. I liked how the original protagonist became the mentor to the next generation. As we exited the cinema complex, uh, Kalei's eyes lit up. He pointed to the food court, the bright uh, signage, yeah, uh, beckoning us inside. Don't worry, guys, isn't Raku to cry? He has dignity. See, that's why Raku's better. Raku cries. Oh, I'm starving. Wanna grab some grinds? <laughs> Bro's so totally radical, dude. He's just Hawaiian. <laughs> Not to say all Hawaiians are like this, but there is a trend. That's all I'm saying. I am hungry. I feel like eating a loco moco, a ramen, or a vegan banh mi. Oh, that sounds really good. Gotta go for the vegan option. Also, just Vietnamese food in general. Just God bless. Um, I order the vegan Vietnamese shop and order a banh mi. Uh, minutes later, I carry a tray with the sandwich back to the table. Kalei is already sitting down, a glistening bowl of rice topped with a spicy mayo slather tuna. Oh my god, he gets good fucking taste. Uh, it's sitting in front of him. He splits his chopsticks. That looks pretty action. <laughs> I don't know what he's saying. Uh, I take a bite of the sandwich, savoring the crisp, sweet, vinegary vegetables and the crunchy bread. Anyway, that was so good, right? I especially like the scene where the sergeant finally puts down his uniform. I nod, chewing my food as I listen to him. Kalei talks for several minutes, rambling about his favorite scenes and, he act and the acting performance of the leads. When his steam is all used up, he scratches the back of his neck and returns his attention to his Pokeball. Sorry, I did it again. I talk so much. My friends usually have to tell me to shut up. Me! Okay, for me to hate him would be to hate myself, and we're not gonna do that ever, so... <laughs> oh, it's okay. I like listening to you. Yo, Abram's my kind of fucking people. When people say this to me, it actually makes me want to fucking melt into a million pieces. Really? <laughs> yeah, he looks embarrassed. Oh, thanks. That's nice of you. No one has ever said that to me before. No, honey, that's not true. I'm saying it right now, and I'm going to say it a million other times. Yes, Kalei, you only talk about yourself. That is obnoxious. Really, guys would never. <laughs> Crying is only acceptable if you're blonde, SMH. What do you think of the movie? I like the characters, action sequence, themes. I like the themes. I really like the themes. Considering that the sergeant's entire goal in the original series of the film was to prove himself to his father, I thought it was fitting that uh, in this film he found peace with himself and his accomplishments despite never receiving his father's approval. Kalei nods, listening in, uh, intently as he chewed on a slice of pickled radish. We talked about the movie for several minutes, but the conversation quickly dies down. To be honest, I'm not all that familiar with the Mad Gun series. I watched the original films years ago, and I just read the synopsis as a refresher. They did such a good job. I get so lucky with the casting. You really do. Like, <laughs> you really, really do. You know, he said, no one has ever said anything that nice to me in a Nano Run game last year. Matthew, <laughs> stop. Fucking stop right now. Jail. You dragged Annalise into this. You dragged Matthew into this. What are you doing? This movie was excellent, but it was just a very solid, entertaining action film overall. I can't think of much to talk about. But yeah, it was really good. I'm glad that we came to see it. My voice trails off. Mm. Mm. Kalei grins shiftlessly and takes a bite out of his Poke Bowl before washing it down with a sip of Coke. Oh no, oh no, 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 no. Uh oh, the conversation stopped. What will you do now? <laughs> do a little dance. He stands, uh, he's standing behind me. He slides his hands across my. Ooh, 
fucking ew no uh, tracing my clavicle it feels like he's about to grab my throat and strangle me see i told you that this would happen he's getting bored he's realizing that you're not the interesting person that he thought you were soon he'll regret ever inviting you to hang out with him my skin feels cold i look at calais he's looking at a nearby shop selling rice balls He's probably thinking about how boring this conversation is, how much he regrets inviting me out, how much he regrets being my friend. I take another bite, but it's hard to swallow. The food feels like glue in my throat. I'm one of all Why don't you excuse yourself to the bathroom? Stay in there a while. And when you come out, you can pretend that you got food poisoning. Abram influencer Ara. <laughs> Kalei is good at ending and ask Kalei to take a video for the class. <laughs> I can't. That's a TikTok video. <laughs> Matthew has seven years on Clay. It was his fault that no one had ever said anything nice to him at that time. At least that way you'll think that you're miserable company because you're ill. And not because you're just a miserable person. Genuine good advice from guys. We want to avoid uncomfortable situations. Yes, but only with people who we don't like. <laughs> we like Clay. I managed to choke down the bite of food. Guys is right. It wouldn't even be a lie. My food is settling uneasily in my stomach. I place my hand on the other side of my seat, getting ready to scoot back from the Do table. Do you ever wonder what life would be like if you were the last person alive? Um, where's this coming from, my guy? I mean, I'll listen, but what? Wait, we like Kalei? <laughs> no. Oh, what? My retreat is interrupted by Kalei's sudden interjection. No, like, seriously. Post-apocalyptic movies always focus on the survival aspect. But what if that's not the problem? Assume you've got a shelter and all the food, water, and electricity you want. Mm -hmm. But you're completely alone. You've got all this time on your hands. What would you do with it? Is that what he was thinking about? The hypothetical apocalypse? What made you think about that all of a sudden? That's random. Well, I don't know. Sometimes these thoughts pop up in your head, you know? And they just keep scratching at the inside of your skull until you let them out. Like all the bad jokes I have in my head and I just have to let them out. When he was like, what would you do with all the time alone? I was just like, jork it. <laughs> That's immediately where my fucking head went. I'm sorry. And then I was like, well, no, I'd probably write stories, but then like, then I'd only be writing stories for myself. So I don't know how much fun that would be. I would just have to make up personalities. I'd have to do what like SpongeBob did when he like put the penny and the napkin and the chip in front of him and then they, they these are my friends now and i'm writing stories for my friends and they're my audience um and then just like keep myself mildly sane or maybe just go insane but have a good time clay do you happen to think of the roman empire sometimes <laughs> he takes his hat off and ruffles his hair looking a little embarrassed he puts the hat back on i guess i would travel watch other movies i can before i die yeah, probably this one. I mean, it would keep you entertained. I'd watch all the movies I can before I die. All the things that I would normally wouldn't have time for. Witness the last remnants of humanity's ex existence before it all disappears. What about you? What would you do if everyone disappeared on you? Hmm. I guess I would travel around and look for people. Oh. I thought that you said you were the last person alive. You already know that there aren't any other people, right? Well... I think if I actually believed that, I wouldn't be able to handle it, knowing that I'm all alone in this huge world. I won't leave you alone, baby. Don't worry about it. If I keep it. searching, then I can hope that I'll find someone someday. Even if it doesn't happen, the thought would keep me alive. You know? Yeah, but that's not living, that's surviving, my dear. I understand Clay's feelings, but I can't relate. I thought more than once. Uh, that if I was all alone in the world, then it wouldn't be too bad. I wouldn't have to worry about dealing with anyone. And mine would finally stop screaming at me. I could finally be at peace. Sorry for killing the mood with that weird question. I shake my head. No, well, it was kind of weird, but I get it. Sometimes you can't control your thoughts. And it was an interesting question. I just needed some time to think about it. Kalei's chuckle uh, awkwardly and leans forward. How's your food? Ooh, looks cherry. Oh, oh, it is good. Do you want a bite? Somehow I feel a little bit more relaxed. Kalei's bizarre question had knocked me out of my maelstrom of my thoughts. This is so me hanging out with the with the girls though. I just like just drop like a huge like philosophical question on them, like in the middle, and then just go back to just talking about random shit. 
That's real girlhood right there. Plot twist, Kalei is the ghost and Geist the real person. Not you sipping for Kalei the way I sip for Geist. Not the Roman Empire. Stop spoiling the twist chart. I almost laugh. Of course, Kalei wasn't uh, focused on me the entire time. I'm not the sun. He doesn't revolve around me. He has his own random fleeting thoughts. After we finish lunch, we drop by a charity store and browse through their used DVDs. We don't talk the entire time, but at the very least, I do feel tempted to run to the bathroom when the conversation slows down. When I flop onto my bed later that evening, exhaustion envelops my body, but it's a different kind of exhaustion than normal. A good kind of exhaustion. And there. I admire the concluding paragraphs in my classics paper. And then we can skip. <clears throat> I'm so glad I don't have to be mean to him here. I felt so- this one was the worst one. I don't mind. Okay. Wait here. I'll be right back. Promise? He returns- now there's enough time for guys to be like, he actually hates you and he's running away right now and then he's never gonna come back and he actually thinks you're disgusting and he wishes he never met you. <laughs> uh, I look up. Kalei's brow is furrowed with worry. It doesn't suit his face. Normally so sunny and cheerful. Guilt gnaws at my chest. Oh, D when he gives you this look, mm. I'm trying to mimic it. Mm. <laughs> so, the guy's impression is so on point. Are uh. you sick? Did you drink too much? No. <laughs> or are you having a panic attack? Oh, I am a panic attack. I have never considered that before. I had similar episodes in the past, but I just told myself that everyone feels nervous sometimes. My episodes were normal. I was normal. Now he knows that you're a freak. Someone who can't even handle normal life. A person who's constantly on the verge of a complete mental breakdown. <laughs> Guys, goodbye. <laughs> there you go. Get him out of here. But also me, when I have a panic attack, I'm like, actually, you're a fucking loser. Now everybody hates you, and you're actually not cool at all, and you should die. <laughs> okay, bloody pack it up. Wah, wah. <laughs> Guys fell low. See, he is so funny. That's why I love him. <laughs> when the jokes aren't funny, and you just laugh. You, your chime, what you're doing right now, is like, well, he's hot, so I'll laugh at his jokes. And that's not what we're doing in this house. Geist is sitting next to me on the couch, arm draped around my shoulders. His cold fingertips are tickling my earlobe. It feels like I'm being buried alive. I'm having a panic attack. I, I think I'm having a panic attack, especially with him like just hovering behind me. I say it quietly, the words stumbling over my tongue. I almost don't want Kalei to hear. It's strange, labeling what it is, what is happening to me like this. Part of me is glad to give it a name, to put a face on this monster that has tormented me for so many years. Part of me is terrified of this label, this brand singing my skin, singeing my skin, marking me as someone irreparably broken. Got it. Okay, 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 okay. Breathe with me, okay? In. Ooh, out. In. Out. Good job, good job. Can I hold your hand? Guys. <laughs> Guys, what? Yo. <laughs> If I stop, let's just stop for a second. The music stopped. I don't know why it stopped. I don't know. If I was listening to that voice like right now and I wasn't on fucking stream, I would have replayed that bitch like three, four, five times. Okay? But we're on stream, so we're gonna be fucking professional. A uh, pardon? Fucking pardon? How much did you pay these guys again? <laughs> oh. I need this for when I have a panic attack. Next panic attack, I'm just putting food in this shit up. What? Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, for real. Like, wow. <laughs> Wait, what did he say? What did he say? I didn't even read it. Professional and actually I've lived a lot of this line. It was really good. It is good. <laughs> it's really good. Oh god, where was we? Where were we? <laughs> Part of me is terrified. Okay. Can I hold your hand? Yes. Yes. A million times yes. Okay. With guys to quit. Stop. He, I nod. He grasps my hand and squeezes it. His hand is warm and reassuring as he leads me through. The, he would talk you through it. <laughs> he would talk you through it. I'm just saying. As he leads me through some deep You're breaths. okay? Everything is going to be okay. 
I believe him. Ooh, I'm here for you. I'm not going anywhere. <laughs> I'm not troubling, dog. <laughs> I'm, I'm cool right now. I'm normal. I'm here for you. I'm not going anywhere. Okay. He repeats this over and over as he continues to help me uh, breathe with, <laughs> with each return. It feels like a rock is lifted off my chest. Once I've calmed down, Kalei gives my hand one final squeeze before letting go. Never let go. We're doing a summer wedding. You're all invented XOXO. How you feeling? All right. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh, see, he makes you tremble. Red flag. <laughs> I need an emotional support, Kalei, to keep in my pocket. To be, uh, for real. Hot. Real. Emotional support, Kalei voice clip. Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Do you want to go home? Are you going to be okay walking through the crowd? No. <laughs> So are you act like a damsel in distress? I nod again. Kalei uh, helps me to my feet. I follow closely behind him as he leads uh, me back out into the masses of people. It's still suffocating, but it's different this time. Kalei walks in front of me, parting the crowd like the Red Sea. He took off his stupid fucking hat. <laughs> parting the crowd like the Red Sea. Meanwhile, I focus on the plumeries on Kalei's back, counting each flower petal. That's good. The no, you were simping joy. <laughs> I know I am I haven't denied it. I know what I am. I know who I am, and I accept it. The chatter of the seals vaguely threatening. Don't hurt and saw saw. Uh, by the time that I'm finished, we're out of the heart of the gathering. There are only a few stragglers surrounding us now. I let out a breath that I didn't know I was holding. I jog up to Clay's side. I'm sorry for bothering you. My cheeks are burning. I want to disappear, to crawl into some hole that leads straight into the center of the earth and never come back. It's no problem at all. I wanted to get some air anyway. Big parties like this aren't usually my thing. Small parties are. <laughs> uh, guys sidle <sighs> sidles up next to me like a horse. Because he's a horse. His hands in his pockets. Look at you. You've completely ruined his night. He could have had fun with everyone else. But he had to babysit you. It's okay, I'll make it up to him. It's okay, guys. You can fix our night then. No, you can't. <laughs> my hands hover around the headphones, slung around my neck. I want to put them on, but it would be too rude with Calais here. I'm not usually like this. I'm a little embarrassed that I acted like this in front of you. Kalei doesn't look surprised. Instead, he dons a strange expression of grim understanding. It happens to a lot of people. It's nothing to be ashamed of. What a liar. It happens to a lot of people. Who, exactly, has he ever even met anyone as freakish as you? <laughs> also, not us be not Kalei being the lord of lies. <laughs> I'm your friend. I'm here to support you. Always. Don't friend zone us, Clay. I can't handle it. Don't friend zone us. Oh, how generous. He's offering to be your crutch because of how fragile you are. There he is, moving the goalpost. Clay kicks a stone lying in the path. It skips down the pe uh, cement, landing in a nearby patch of flowers. One of my relatives has a panic attack sometimes. She's brilliant. One of the smartest and kindest people I know. But she feels things a lot, you know? And it can be overwhelming. Look, I don't want to say that I'm his relative, but like, is she me? <laughs> so sometimes she just ah, needs a few minutes to process her emotions and I hold her hand and talk her through it. It's no big deal at all. I did say he talked you through it. This is his relative though, so we're not gonna make it weird, but when I'm right, I'm right. <laughs> Uh, it's okay, his text isn't red. Gosh, uh, that's true, that's true, he's not the Lord of Lies, so we're okay. No big deal. Collapsing into the middle of a crowd and troubling everyone is no big deal? Wow, Kalei, so we aren't special to you? You held my hand for nothing. <laughs> not even not being offended. I don't know what to think of that. Part of me is annoyed by Kalei's flippancy, the way he dismisses my suffering with a few easy words, and yet part of me is also strangely reassured by his nonchalance. As I'm mulling over the last statement, we reach my building. I fumble my ID card out of my pocket and swipe it through the reader. Thank you. I wave to Kalei and shut the door, his words ringing in my ears. I groan into my pillow. 
Can't believe what I did last night in front of Clay, of all people. I bet he's gossiping to all of his friends right now. The weirdest thing happened to me last night. A freak had a complete breakdown in the middle of the main plaza. Crazy, right? <laughs> yeah, that's crazy, right? See how crazy it is when I accept this invite. Okay. <laughs> it only takes a few seconds for the phone to ding with the familiar notification. Really? Yay. I'll come get you right now. Damn, right now? Okay. No hesitation. Sec. Sec. Uh, when I exit the building, Kalei is already there. His cheeks and ears tinged pink from the cold. He waves excitedly to me with both hands. <laughs> uh, he leads me through the darkened campus alongside the lamp-lit paths until we reach the student union. When he opens the door, I'm greeted by a trio of new faces. One girl and one guy are lounging on the couch in front of the TV. Another girl is unrolling the paper towels and stacking them next to a couple of pizza boxes. This is Mari, Naya, and Asher. Everyone, this is Avro. Hi, that's me. Hi. Hi, everyone. He has female friends. This is a green flag. Uh, stop trying to convert me away from my lover boy. Jim and his yandere era. Never thought I'd see it. <laughs> He's gaslit himself into liking guys. Nye and Asher wave an acknowledgement. Uh, Mario hands me a plate and a paper towel. Help yourself. This one is vegan. She opens the oily cardboard boxes, revealing two pizzas. One is covered in tomato sauce, vegan mozzarella, and basil. The other had basil pasta, pesto, sausage, roasted peppers, and goat cheese. Uh, give me the- oh fuck, I forgot which one was what. Can't really go wrong, though. Pesto! I grab a slice of the basil pesto pizza. The herbaceous scent makes my mouth water. What drink you like? Beer or soda? Or just water? Just water for me, babes. He fills up a glass of water for me. I accept it, settling it on the table. Kalei takes a slice of the pesto pizza and sits on the floor in front of the couch. I join him. Mmm, pesto. I love pesto. Especially if it's a fresh pesto. Oh my god. Uh, the room dims and the TV lights up. On the screen, a lanky young man with a mop of curly hair fields uh, questions from a curious reporter. It's an interesting movie. The protagonist is a college student who joined his best friend's startup. They make a social network that quickly takes over the country. However, midway through the film, it's revealed that the best friend is actually an alien who used the social network as a way to harvest information about humanity. As the film winds down, I finish the final bite of pizza. The protagonist just barely evades his best friend's ray gun and stabs him in the throat. In the final few seconds, the protagonist staggers up to the console trying to prevent the information from being sent to the mothership, but he's too late. The film's final shot is one of the console screen eerily displaying transmission sent in big pixelated green letters. Ooh, green bad. <laughs> Just like guys. I don't know. Um, he likes pesto. Red flag. <laughs> Fresh pesto is so good at this. Stop with your bad days. <laughs> good girl waking at seven. Flips on the light. Mari turns out the TV. The hell was that? Blatant sequel bait. I thought it was pretty good. Really ominous. It's a fitting metaphor for online privacy, isn't it? They couldn't stop the aliens because it can't be stopped. Once you use the internet, no matter how hard you try, your information is going to be collected and used against you. Kalei, this is adding to my anxiety, sweetie. <laughs> Oh, hello everyone. The five of us clean up, tossing the pizza boxes and cleaning the dishes. When we're done, we sit on the floor in, uh, on the floor in a circle, chatting about the movie. Although, to be fair, Kalei does most of the talking. What movies do you like, Abram? Ah, this question. Better not tell them what you really like. After all, if you tell them that your favorite series is an animated whodunit franchise with kids starring a detective dog, they'll think that you're weird utterly childish mayhaps uh Kalei is overanalyzing i swear hush hush these look like nelly and raku outlines no we saw nelly and raku earlier actually well we didn't see them but they were there uh this is why you need to get a vpn joint you can also watch netflix as one <laughs> uh oh hello nelly raku and tala <laughs> <laughs> Wait, am I stupid? I mean, it's probably actually the outlines of them, but like, I think they're supposed to be different characters. I, it doesn't matter. <laughs> I brush aside Geist's pro uh, provocations I already prepared. I, I watch most things, but I've been watching a lot of sci-fi stuff lately. My favorite is the Eradicator series. Oh, the one about the uh, shape-shifting aliens that take over humanity, right? Yeah, yeah, then the main guy travels back in time to prevent humanity from making contact so they don't get taken over. He's not the protagonist. The protagonist is a woman he's helping. 
He's the guy on the cover, though. Clay side. The guy on the cover is the villain. The villain! The villain! <laughs> us to, us to guys right now. He's the villain! Uh, I left to get dinner for two seconds and I missed the cuties. I don't know, it was like at the beginning of the, the game. I really liked it, especially the scene where the guy jumps into the vat of acid to save everyone else. That's the sequel! Why do you always get so hung up on the details, Kalei? Let up a little. Eradicator 2 is the best one. Because <laughs> he's fucking right. He's like, I'm right, though. I'm so right. The guy on the cover, guys, he's not the villain. You are. No! Yeah, Eradicator Reborn is the best one. The villain wields this pair of nunchucks that turn into machine guns. Holy shit, that sounds dope. I like Eradicator 4, uh, four the one starring Holly Day. That reminds me of the other movie that we watched with Holly Day, the one where she has six months left to live, so she decides to go find her first love. That one was so good. I was crying at the end when she found her boyfriend's last love letter to her. Ending was kind of boring. Just say that you want killer robots to appear in the last 20 minutes of the movie, Asher. 60 years, six months was one of Holly's best performances. It wouldn't be an exaggeration to say that the director made the film with her in mind. <sighs> It was a crime that she didn't win the Golden Galaxy Award that year. Oh, I, 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 sorry, I skipped past that really fast. As the conversation meanders away from the topic that I had started with, I fall silent while Mari and Asher bicker about the sentimentality of the climax of six years, six months. Uh, Kalei leans over and asks if I've ever watched it, but all I can do is shake my head. Sometimes the conversation veers to movies that I have watched and I scramble to think of something to say, something interesting that isn't too weird or offensive, but by the time I plan my words, the others are already talking about something completely different. Tick tock, tick tock. Not tick tock again. It's been so long since you last talked. It's just like class, isn't it? You're going to get a participation score of zero, you know? <laughs> I don't care. I'm not a fucking nerd. I'm a wallflower, baby. I open my mouth, trying to say something, but I soon close it again. Given up already? Oh, you've truly got an iron will. Why don't you go join the other furniture? <laughs> okay, you gagged us again. That was a good line. <laughs> Holy shit. If guys was in my head, I'd probably just be laughing half the time until it actually hurts me. <laughs> no, he's not good. He's funny because he's mean as fuck. Not barks! Uh, guys, someone who turned us into a TikTok influencer. I placed my hands in my lap, focusing on wiping some of the res residual oil from my fingers. At this point, if I did say anything, it just earned stares of befuddlement. Who is the stranger interrupting our conversation? Better not say anything. I'll just stay quiet and wait for this get together to end. As Naya and Mari uh, discuss the relationship dynamics in a gothic romance film, the conversation slows down. Kalei is listening intently to the argument, but Asher looks bored. He takes a swig from his beer before looking at me. Asher raises an eyebrow. Hey, Abram, why are you so quiet? Oh god, not this question, fuck! Uh, I freeze. I can't remember how many times I've been asked this question. What am I supposed to say? What, are they, what do you say to that? Sorry, I'm quiet because I'm shy. I just don't like talking very much. I'm a bit tired. I'm not feeling it today. I don't know these guys that well, so it's hard for me to barge into this conversation. I'm actually kind of messed up in the head, and if I talk, you'll find out. And so I'm not saying anything. There are a million answers, a million excuses, but I can never say anything. All I can do is offer a nervous laugh and say, Yep, I'm quiet. Um, Naya and Mari slowly stop chatting and look at the, at the two of us. Kalei is already staring. I shrink under their gazes. Guy slings close, his cold breath tickling my ear. <laughs> Fuck the, the damn ear. Oh no. It seems like they found out. How did they figure it out? Oh my god. How long did you think that you could hide it? Your real self. You pretended to be interesting. You pretended to be a person worth talking to. But you didn't even make it five minutes before showing them how boring you are. That's not true. We've been here for at least two hours. So, there. What will they think of Kalei now? He stuck his neck out for you, introducing you to all of his friends. Now what will they think? They might start to think that he's a miserable failure too, because he likes someone like you. You know what, Chatter? You did a really good job of making me never want to listen to my anxiety thoughts ever again. Congratulations, you fucking did it. All you had to do was just personify them into an annoying blonde British man, and I'm like, okay, cool. Never listening to this shit again. This is tiring as fuck. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. I'm wore out. Like, uh, oh god. 
<laughs> well, I remember one time someone told me that I was quiet and I was just like, yes. <laughs> I'm glad LVO based uh, Guys Calais the failure. Sorry. I'm sorry for being so boring. I'm sorry for being such a killjoy. I'm sorry for ruining the mood. You've already ruined everything. You think that begging for forgiveness will help. You're just making things worse. Uh, why are you... Kalei squeezes his beer can. The crinkling sound is loud to the relative Maybe child. it's because they think hard about what they're going to say instead of saying any old thing. Yeah. Our man came to our defense. <laughs> Guys would never. Guys would never. He prods Asher with his knee. Why are you so loud all the time, bro? Maybe you should learn to be a better listener. <laughs> Got it, though. Fucking gagged him. Asher's brows furrow and his nostrils flare. He looks pissed. Good. Now look at what you've done. You're ruining his friendships. Kalei is standing up for you. He's getting into a fight with his friend. Kalei is being for you. rude. <laughs> I wrap my arms around myself, my knuckles whitening. I stare at my drink on the table, watching the condensation pool at the bottom. The same five words run around my head on repeat, screaming and screaming and screaming. I should not have come. I should not have come. I should not have come. I wish I wasn't here. I wish I wasn't anywhere but here. Asher rolls his eyes before shoving Kalei in the shoulder. You're one to talk. You're the loudest out of all of us. Kalei rolls his eyes in turn, ignoring his friend's provocation. Anyway, speaking of gothic romances, what did you think about Scarlet Tears? You mentioned that was one of your favorites from last year. We watched that a couple weeks ago. Kalei smoothly transitions the conversation to a film that I've watched. I manage to get in a few sentences, although it doesn't take too long for the conversation to veer in a direction that I can't keep up with. However, whenever he notices, Kalei brings me back into the fold with an easy question. Asher remains relatively quiet. His arms are crossed and his eyes are narrowed into a pointed glare aimed straight at Kalei. The other boy doesn't stop sulking until we split uh, up for the evening with everyone returning to their respective dorm rooms. Okay, I accept it, guys. This gaslighting, but I draw the line at a guy arguing with a friend. Uh, good friends never argue or fight. Shoves Angel and Sandra in the closet. When we're outside, I cross my arms, shielding my body from the chill. I feel strangely nauseous and oddly vulnerable in a way that I can't explain, as if someone cut a hole in my chest and left it open so that everyone could peer inside. Kalei scratches his nose. He looks around awkwardly before turning to face me. I'm sorry. No, honey. For what? They, um, said some pretty insensitive stuff to you. They're not usually like that. They're just little bitches, it's okay. They were only like that because you were there. You made everything awkward. I'll make they sure they're on their best Britta. behavior next time. Don't worry. <laughs> there won't be a next time. Not after you messed everything up so badly. That's because Adriel and Sandra aren't friends. They're going to be put inside the Colosseum, and we will have to fight to death to gain Doug's affection. No, that's too interesting. I'm really glad that you came. He's lying. They always lie. He's just trying to. <laughs> we all like movies, but sometimes it feels like I'm the only one who takes him seriously, you know? They're always joking around about how bad the dialogue is or how hot the actors are. Hey, hey, hey. They're just having fun, Kalei, man. Not everything is, you know, a think piece. Whenever I want to talk about the story or the characters, they brush me off. Even when they don't, you can tell they don't want to talk, you know? That's interesting, or, wow, you thought about it a lot. Yeah. Sometimes I, I feel like a weirdo. Like I don't belong. <laughs> Kalei is slut-shaming his friends. Red flag. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a weirdo, like I don't belong. Oh. So it was really nice having you there. It seems like we're on the same wavelength. And we can be in the same house. In the same bed. Married. <laughs> you might be lying. Uh, Plucketing me with soothing words, but he seems sincere. I feel the same way. I really like talking to you too. I mumble the words, barely able to get them out. Inwardly, I curse. I sound so awkward. What if Kalei thinks I'm lying or being insincere? Feels like you listen to me. You I do. really listen. I do. I, I listen. wanted to thank you for that. You're welcome. <laughs> Guilt bubbles in my stomach. I want to protest. That's wrong. Oh, I bumped my sh elbow. I'm not listening. Not really. I'm just so wrapped up in my own thoughts all the time that I don't speak. 
In reality, I'm a selfish jerk who's always obsessing about myself. I don't listen to you because my thoughts are constantly screaming in my head. But when I look at Kalei, a sunny smile erodes my doubts. He's genuinely grateful towards me. Even if I was, if it was accidental, I did something for him that he appreciates. I made him feel heard. I guess I did a good thing. I look around, Geis is gone. Crying somewhere, no doubt. We arrive at my dorm building. Thanks for inviting me, I had fun. When I return to my room, the guilt in my stomach has morphed into something else, a strange mixture of emotions, one that I can't easily define. Guilt, nervousness, humiliation, gratitude, and something almost like pride? Not Percy. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Around a month has passed since Kalei invited me to meet his friends. I lounge on my bed, scrolling through my feed. Is it Kalei? I scan my notifications. It's not. Instead, I got an email. I run down to the mailroom when I talk to the student that's manning the desk. My excitement is so high that I can get the words out without stumbling over them. And we've read this part. We get the we get the movie we bought. Now what? Push him away! Push him away! Slap him! Uh, no, guys, don't leave. You're so sexy. <laughs> guys, this touch fills me with revulsion, resentment, and anger. I shove him away. He stumbles backward, hitting his head against my desk. He rubs the back of his head, glaring at me. Everyone hates you? It seems like the only one who hates me is you, guys. Geis' eyes widen. His eyes are brimming with some emotion I can't quite describe. It's almost like betrayal. Oh no! <laughs> no, guys, don't- Oh no, how can you push him away? Not gonna lie, this scene is my actual favorite of the whole game. Chloe said for long nights. I, I don't hate you. I love you. I care about you more than anyone else. You're my entire world. I exist for you. Wah wah. That sucks. <laughs> huh, you love me? When you spend all day telling me how worthless, disgusting, and unlovable I am? When you do nothing but beat me down, running me into dust so that you could pick up the pieces? I don't know what that is, but it's definitely not love. The floodgates are open now. I blink quickly, trying not to let the tears fall out of my eyes as the words fall out of my mouth. Why? What's your game? You want me to feel small and laughable and hopeless so that I never feel confident enough to leave you? So that I'll always need you? Geist opens his mouth before closing it again. He tries to speak a couple more times before he finally finds the words. I'm just being honest with you. I don't want you to get hurt. Not when you're this fragile. Not when the slightest push will break you into a thousand pieces. Okay, the I'm just being honest with you thing is so like, that is 90% of what these fucking bitches always resort to. I'm just being honest, man. Like, I'm just telling the truth. Like, being honest doesn't equal being nice or being good. It, and honestly, sometimes lying is the correct thing to do in certain circumstances. Like, I don't know where we got off thinking that being honest is like the only way to be with people. Like, it's good to be honest. It's good to, to be forward with people. But there's a time and a place. Like, it's a one-two option. It's not you just always tell the truth in every situation. And you always lie in every situation. And then, like, I love, I love that he pulled out the, I'm just being honest with you, man. Like, you fucking suck. I don't know what to tell you. Like, if I didn't tell you, no one would tell you. So, ooh. <laughs> it's like, dude. <laughs> Uh, see, guy says, Ken, he only exists for Barbie, equal Abram. <laughs> Not cosplay to me, it's canon, the evil itch user leaving ratings. I'm just being honest, man. <laughs> like, sorry you suck ass. Suck I'm sorry no one will fucking love anything you ever do in your whole life. Like, I'm just being honest, dude. Like, uh, sorry. I'm just trying to be helpful. Like, <laughs> insanity. <laughs> insanity. You're the one who's hurting me. I, I, I just wanted to help. You did a bad job. Negative score. Your Yelp review is negative. You're not helping. You never helped. All you do is fucking talk. The tears are gushing out now. Warm droplets caressing my cheeks. All you do is make me so stressed that I'm terrified to do anything. Boxing me into a prison of my own thoughts so that I can't step outside of it. Trying to alienate me from the people around me. You liar. You lord of lies. Uh, I'm not a liar. You are. You're the lord of lies. But you are. Kalei hates me when every single thing that he has done has communicated the opposite. He said that he likes to talk to me. He invites me to hang out. He wants to meet, uh, he wants me to meet his friends. And yet every single time you tell me that he's pretending, that he actually hated me all along. 
I agree. And also, I think there's a way you can phrase what you say and that it communicates just as much in that context. Yeah, exactly. You gotta, like, you get more bees with honey than vinegar. People, did you call Geist Lawrence? Lawrence isn't the Lord of Lies, okay? He's not. It's misdirection. The true Lord of Lies is another character who I will not say for the sake of spoiling. Geist text in red. Which Lawrence are we talking about? Yeah, okay, yeah, it could be Larry. Mm. <laughs> and yet, every single time you tell me that he's pretending that he actually hated me all along. What kind of crazy hoops do you have to jump through to believe that he hates me after all that? What are you, some kind of mind reader to be able to tell what he's really feeling? No. But I, I just... No. Besides, even if he doesn't hate you now, he'll hate you eventually. It's just a matter of time. And if something happens later, and he tells me that he hates me, so what? I'll move on. I'll live. It won't be the end of the world. I'll make new friends. I'll form new relationships. But if I'm always too scared, if I never reach out, then I'll never form fawns with anyone. I'll just continue floating listlessly through life, blindly following whatever you decide to take, uh, you decide to take me. I might get hurt, and that's okay, it happens. I don't want to spend my life avoiding the things I'm afraid of. I don't want to spend it doing things that I actually want to do. What do you want to do? Not you! <laughs> Not you, you, that's for sure. I don't need to think about my answer. I want to be Kalei's friend. And I want to be more than Kalei's friend. Uh, Geist looks down at his phone, guilt marring his features. He lifts his eyes to meet mine. I stare back unwavering. He extends the phone to me. <sighs> All right. Good luck. That's suspicious as fuck, but okay. I hesitate, thinking that it might be a trick before accepting the device. It's still displaying Kalei's conversation on try message. I bite my lip and send my message quickly. Try not to overthink it. See, we fixed it! <laughs> Guys, baby, I love you for this scene. Are you interested in watching a movie with me? My Siri just triggered. Sorry, I don't understand. Ma'am, we weren't talking to you. <laughs> Get out of here. I just got my hands on Young Detective Dog and I thought you might want to see it. <laughs> my phone buzzes immediately. Yes, I really want to see it. Right now? Right now? I wipe the tears from my eyes. I'm really in no state to see it right now. I pause before sending the next message. I've got a few things to do right now, but maybe in a couple hours? I'll be there. Can't wait. I look up. Geist is gone. Hopefully for good. Wait, okay, so before we get there, listen to this nice music while I go pee. <laughs> and then we'll finish up. Okay. It's so funny that ukulele music has been like reduced in my head to being just like YouTube advertisement shit and or Spongebob music and I'm so sorry people of Hawaii like that that is you do not deserve this <laughs> It's better than that. It's so pleasant Hey Hey He sounds a little different than usual than normal uh, Almost overly enthusiastic. He brandishes a plastic bag filled to the brim with different snacks Wow, you just had these lying around? Oh no, I ran to the store really quick. I didn't know what you liked, so I got a bunch of stuff. I hope that there are sour punch straws in there. He rubs just through the bag. Oops, I forgot drinks. It's okay, babe. Even though I am pretty thirsty. <laughs> uh, I laugh. Where in my room? Why are you the one trying to provide everything? 
He smiles awkwardly. You're right. Uh, that's kind of weird, isn't it? <laughs> I guess I got a little excited and didn't think too much. It's okay, but don't think. Don't think. <laughs> See, that's the difference between Kalei and Geis. Geis knows what we like. Yeah, now. Give Kalei a chance. You gotta get to know us. We laugh together before settling on the rug. I prop my laptop on my desk chair. I plug in my DVD player before carefully inserting the detective dog disc. The movie starts with a close-up of a dingy city street. Several pairs of feet pass by, splashing through the muddy puddles thrown over the cement. It's okay, but I don't think you just want him to be a himbo. <laughs> Look, sometimes it's better if men don't think, you know what I mean? <laughs> Clay is good, though. He's good. We like him. So he could think if he wants, and he thinks quite a lot about fiction and stuff, so he's good. But he doesn't always have to think. It's okay. I like him for who he is. Kalei opens the carton of cookies. He holds the box open for me. I take one, savoring the cream-filled sandwiches between the two chocolate biscuits. Oh, Oreos! Uh, he also opens a bag of spicy chips. Okay, this is my motherfucking man right here. <laughs> uh, and sets it on the ground between us. The camera zooms in, focusing on an alleyway. In the background, a dirty cardboard box comes into view. A small puppy, his fur matted with dirt and blood, lies in, do in the box. I'm dog. In the future, I'll be detective dog. But not now. Now. I'm just a poor orphan dog. We quickly become completely enthralled by the film. The animation is definitely dated, but the voice acting performances and the writing are mesmerizing. The plot is much darker than other entries of the detective dog series, following dog as he's falsely accused of stealing a rich cat's pearls. Ooh. I'm making a prediction that at the end of this, Calais is going to, like, make... He's gonna like, wow, this is what this story was really about kind of what the main character was going through this whole time with the, in mind my mind. That's that's my prediction. On screen, we watch Dog's interrogation. Dog stays quiet and the policeman tries to emotionally manipulate him, uh, promising a warm bed and food if Dog fesses up. I fumble a chip out of the bag, enjoying the spicy sweetness. Oh, is it like the spicy sweet Southern Lay's chips? Because I really like those. That's what I'm imagining in my head. I reach towards the bag again when Kalei's fingers ghost over the back of my hand. I freeze. Uh, sorry. We're so dorky. <laughs> he jerks his hand back, awkwardly readjusting his hat. His ears are red. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> it's okay, babe. Uh... It's okay. <laughs> Dang, I do love spicy crisp too. Not you saying crisp. The fucking, the British, the Europeans. Cut it out. <laughs> wow. You know what? <laughs> Not me fumbling right now. Oh my god. Now I'm nervous. And now what? I hope Geist is still here. <laughs> I reach over and place my hand on his, squeezing it. Then I turn towards him. I hover in front of Kalei's face just long enough that he can sense my intentions. His eyes widen, but he doesn't pull away. Kaleo, chips are fries! Fish and chips! No, just say fish and fries. And then you got the alliteration, it's better. I press my lips against his, if only for a moment, but his skin is warm and soft against mine. I pull away just as quickly, burying my face into my hands. Somehow I had gotten drunk on chocolate cookies, spicy chips, and orphan animated dogs. Kalei turns away from me, I want to scream. I ruined it. Good going, Gabriel. The second that you tell guys to get lost, you decide to act like a creep and a pervert. I could really have used that jerk's in in intervention if I had known uh, if I was going to do something this stupid. Now Clay really won't want to be friends anymore, and it'll feel too awkward to stop the movie, so now he's going to have to be stuck here with a deviant. Clay uh, attentively reaches his hand out. He places it over mine, interlacing our fingers. He squeezes my hand. <laughs> the soft shoujo flower. <laughs> Where is show? Oh my god! I, playing Chris really would have been the move here. Uh, after our introductory computer science class ended and the new semester started, Kalei and I started to officially date. We often spend our evenings together and we go out on the weekends. Nowadays, I invite him to hang out as often as he invites me. Our unspoken rule is that whoever does the inviting gets to choose the movie. I've gotten to know Kalei's friends better, too. Mari is a sweet girl who's always caring for others like a mother hen. Naya is level-headed and unflappable, and with a penchant for sarcasm. Even Asher isn't a bad guy once you get to know him. He has a tendency to blurt out whatever is on his mind, and he's a little immature, but he's genuinely caring and has his moments. I find myself striking up conversations with other classmates, too. We don't become fast friends, but we exchange a few friendly words. Sometimes the interactions are as smooth as butter, and sometimes they're as rough as sliding across sandpaper. But that's okay. I feel myself changing little by little. That man didn't vanish completely. 
but whenever he tries to drown my ears in nervous uh, prophecies, I don't respond. It's difficult to ignore him, but he's quieter now, less insistent. His rhetoric has changed a little, too. He no longer speaks exclusively in apocalyptic foretellings. Sometimes he watches me open up my fourth cup of instant noodles of the week and says, That much sodium can't be good for you. Why not cook something? When I'm on the couch, scrolling mindlessly through the social media, he sits next to me and leans to my ear and whispers, Going for a walk would be better for you than lazing about at home, wouldn't it? <laughs> not as him nagging us, but you know, it is a little helpful. And I sit at my desk browsing through online shopping portals. He sidles up from behind me and shuts my laptop saying, you know you don't have room for frivolous pur uh, purchases in the budget right now. He's so lame. He's so lame. Just let us live our motherfucking life, man. Let me get sodium poisoning and, and, and lay around in my bed and rot and, and buy shit I don't need. Stop telling me to live my life. No, no. His tongue hasn't lost its edge, but those lectures only bring me mild annoyance, not fear. Sometimes I actually take his advice, and sometimes I tell him no. On the occasion, he falls back into ha old habits, reciting old lines. They don't like you. Everyone hates you. You do nothing but ruin everything. But he says them less and less with each passing day. There is a man that follows me. He's always watching, and sometimes he whispers in my ear. And I wonder if he'll ever go away. He probably won't. And that's all right. Oh. Aww. That's very sweet. What an actually very wholesome game. Is this the most wholesome chatter cap game that exists? It may. It may be. Good job, everyone. And by everyone, I mean chatter. <laughs> and the voice actors. You know, so good job, guys. You really nailed it. I really love Calais. That was very nice. Had a good, good time. I like the allegory. It's very fun. This smug ass. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it wasn't too bad of me shitting on him every two seconds, but look, look, you know, I think it, it, it's really helpful for a lot of people, you know, we all got anxiety. I'm an anxiety girly, okay? Not to brag or anything, <laughs> but I have thoughts in my head telling me I want to die, you know, so it's nice. I'm crying that the gay where a guy is constantly insulting you the entire time. It's my most wholesome game. Sorry, I don't make the rules. No one died. No one got eaten alive or like, you know. But you know what? Wear it on your chest. <laughs> Just take it. For now. You know, when's the when's the shoujo game gonna come out from Chatter, huh? When's it gonna happen? We need TNT. Everybody needs to make their own TNT. It's so true. <laughs> I liked it. It was a good time. I'm glad I played it. Uh, was there anything that I was missing? I think I got everything, right? Outside of just, like, the flavor choices of, like, maybe I should have gotten the hot dog or the mac and cheese, you know? Um, but I, I think we're good pretty solid and right and perfect for the stream time as well holy shit holy shit yes chatter when will we get fluffy show joke guys they'll say stop <laughs> honestly with Kalei's effects i really want to make a full show joke you should and i would eat that shit up like literally eat it up so good i'm down now i'm eating good tonight but this was a good time. I'm glad that I was finally able to stream one of your games instead of recording them and leaving them on my YouTube channel to collect dust. Yes, you missed the very important mac and cheese choice and you got everything. Okay, cool. I like it. It, it flowed really well too. I'm glad that I went Geist first. Can you imagine if I just saved Geist for last how like worse off this would end? <laughs> Holy shit. My instincts are all right. Things are all good. We had a good time. I like it very much. Um, <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I guess... No, I was gonna say the deep water witch is not wholesome. <laughs> I mean, like it has cute moments and stuff, but it's it's like you feel very unsettled by a lot of things. So it's definitely still most wholesome. Yes, in a high school setting with a guy says our senpai. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> I can't do this anymore. Chime in the chat has been the geist in my head. <laughs> this entire game just saying the most unhinged shit. Um, we would have ended up cuddling in bed with our husband. It would have been neat. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it's very grim. In the end of TDW is deaf not wholesome. I can't build it as a wholesome game. Yeah, that's fair. That makes a lot of sense. It didn't ever feel wholesome. I don't know why. I was like, well, maybe it was. I was just thinking back. Um, but good times, good times, great times. Okay, so now we should get ready for the end of stream. Because we've got a busy week this week, baby. Busy week. Okay, so today was my, my, my mind, 
Monday. Uh, every other stream will be a daytime stream this week, probably. Um, I don't know about Friday because I don't exactly know when Carrot's gonna have the game out, so when it comes out is the second I'm gonna boot up stream, so it's gonna be very impromptu. Uh, so tomorrow we will do a normal stream. It's the only normal stream from the previous streams, which is we're gonna be playing more Quaint on Tuesday. Um, I don't know how far into Quaint we are. I think I'm pretty far in the game at this point. Um, so I only imagine that maybe I have this stream and maybe the next stream left. I, I don't know. I'll have to talk to Hero about that. We'll see. Uh, but good time with Quaint. Fucking love Quaint. If you haven't played it, play it. Uh, it's a great time. Um, then we're going to be playing Our Cinderella on Wednesday. Now, originally, I had asked Carrot, because I wasn't sure, um, from the last Wonderland stream, because we caught up. We're caught up on part five, and we're waiting for the finale now. So I was like, should I wait until after the finale to play Our Cinderella, or should I squeeze it in right before I play the finale? And I was like, well, I think it would be weird if I played it afterward because most people have played it before. So to simulate the experience, I will be shoving our Cinderella into the Wednesday slot and trying to play all of it um, that day. So it might be a bit of a longer stream, uh, which is fine. I have no problem. Then on Thursday, we will, which is April 4th and is also Chime's birthday. So we will be streaming uh, Rondé Doug. I wasn't sure where to put it on the thing until I was like, wait, uh, their birthday's on <laughs> this day, so let's do it that day. Um, and it's perfect because we're supposed to be streaming our Wonderland on the 5th as it releases. So uh, it all worked out pretty good. I'm pretty excited for everything. I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish Ronde Doug that day. Probably not. Um, but I'm going to play as much of it as I can and just pick up the rest of it uh, probably next Monday or whenever, basically. Lol, the day during which I am a star. Yes, if you behave yourself. <laughs> if you behave yourself, you'll be a star. I will say this. There is a surprise um, in the stream that's not just playing the game. And that's all I'll say. I'll just leave it as a little surprise, so you'll want to drop by. <laughs> and I'll save it for the beginning of the stream in case you have to leave at any point, so don't worry. Uh, I think you'll be able to finish one route for Ronde Doug. Okay, so I want to make two different protagonists for it, maybe. Um, no, wait, I'm an idiot. I'm not making an OC. I, I'm an idiot. Okay, I, don't, I have to decide if I want to play Sandra or um, Adriel, and I really don't know because I'm equally excited for both, so uh, I guess we'll wait and see. <laughs> a, a part of me is like ladies first, but we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I'm not going to say anything. Well, actually, it's your birthday. What would you prefer me to do that day? So, if you don't have an answer now, you can give me an answer later, but um, I would like to finish at least one route that day. If you want to do bad ends, Adriel first. <laughs> but it, actually, I think you might like Adriel better. Well, you know, I don't know. I I, I, I don't know, because, like, I feel like they both really speak to me. I think this is the first game that's, like, like, I don't know. It's, like, so similar to a game that I would make. So I just, like, I'm really excited. I'm like, this is for me. <laughs> I'm delusional. You know what I mean? Uh, <laughs> honestly, both would work. Adriel is funnier. Sandra is fluffer. Fluffier. Damn it! I I'm gonna have to flip a coin. I'll flip a coin at the beginning of the stream. That could be fun. So I'll flip a coin when we start stream. Uh, and then other things. Anyway, but yes, we've got a very exciting week this week. Started off really strong today. My My Mind was a really fun time. I'm glad I was able to squeeze it in and play it all in one stream. Uh, and Kalei was everything. And Geist is nothing. <laughs> it's just a ghost. <laughs> Kalei is everything and Geist is just a ghost. What can I say? Um, so I'm excited for tomorrow for Quaint and for a bunch of new games, uh, our new experiences this week. Mostly our Wonderland, but you know, whatever. But <laughs> hopefully you guys could be here. It's going to be a fun time i'm excited i wanted to get as many of these games caught up as possible um because i don't know if i'm going to be starting a job soon or not so i will just want to get them get them out of the way not not like that that sounds mean doesn't it no not you talking about guys with such ill terms and i'll do it again and i'll fucking do it again <laughs> um I think that's pretty much it. Like, obviously I make my own games. You can follow me on my social media, blah, blah. You know, same old bullshit. Um, and that's pretty much it. I'll be streaming same, t well, not same time tomorrow. I'll be streaming at 11 a.m. CST, my time, all this week. So feel free to drop by if you've got the time. I know it's early for you, chatter, so don't worry about it if you can't. But maybe the Art Wonderland finale stream. Oh, that's another thing I was going to say. Do not feel bad if you do not want to watch my streams for the finale, because I understand that you guys might want to play that for yourselves and, uh, like, experience it separate from me. And that makes perfect sense. So do not worry uh, or anything. It's mostly going to be for Carrot anyway, so, like, in my head. So for me and Carrot. So um, everything else, don't worry about it. 
have a good rest of your day stall that hope you had a good stream this will be uploaded on youtube so don't worry uh i think that's it i think that's it for the plugin thank you guys for showing up as always i really appreciate it i had a good time and yeah i might play arc 5 solo but we'll def catch the bobs okay cool that sounds great so um i appreciate it guys as always see you guys for the rest of the week most likely maybe maybe not who knows doesn't matter bye Okay, get out of here. <laughs> I thought I muted my mic. Holy shit. <laughs> oh no. Joy ASMR, stop. No, get out of here. Get lost. Now I'm muting it. Bye. <laughs>